Hey guys, BJ the Brave here. Welcome back to another uh, masterclass, and this time we are doing a deep dive on the Tau faction, and more specifically on Var. And joining me uh, today for this session is none other than Barrick, who, for those of you who don't know, is actually currently rank one on the ladder. So I'll just show you here, just so you can say I'm not making that up. There we go. So Barrick is uh, rank one, and um, if you didn't see it, Barrick and I did a really good in-depth review of all of the Tau cards. I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. But I think that between the video you're watching now and the in-depth card review that we did last week, that's going to give you a real solid understanding and foundation for the Tau. So, Barrick, welcome back. Hey, BJ. Thanks. It's uh, it's yeah, it's great to be back, and uh, I'm excited to get to show off and kind of explain this uh, this list that has been working really well for me this season and the end of last one. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't wait to get into it with you. And we're going to we're going to break down, you know, really pick Barrick's kind of your, your kind of thought process on this Barrick. I mean, obviously, I've been playing Tau a lot and um, and I know you have. And I think uh, it's, it's going to be it's going to be interesting for me. It's going to be interesting for people, whether they're playing with or against Onvar, I think, like to really kind of understand how you approach this deck. Now, this is an old version, Barrick, of a deck that you had. And I'm sure um, I don't know actually is 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 this like your current list what are some of the flex spots that you that you've kind of thought about messing with if not yeah so this is um this is pretty much the list i've been using for most of the season so far the core of it is um has really been unchanged even even when uh i kind of switched over to this more companion drone uh style the living in the season mm. uh but yeah you are right there are some flexible slots in this deck that i have switched out a few pieces here and there as like just testing one of reveals like maybe in most matchups this actually isn't that great or i need this to shore up my uh weaknesses in this other matchup mm -hmm. and so looking at here um what i've changed since uh you've had this list is the support turret um it's an interesting card and certainly has created woes for a lot of people against Tau, but it doesn't do a whole lot early game if you cannot protect it, um, especially if you are playing second. Um, they're usually going to have a big guy on board, and if you didn't have your turn one missile drone to help clear that, then support card's not going to do much help for you turn two. Um, so I have taken that out and added in the Devilfish uh, as another five drop to smooth out the curve and just really, I mean, the Devilfish has good synergy with the drones, um, especially with reduced costs, you get some free flanking damage when you're playing your companion units, which can be nice as a little bit extra to uh, help regain the board. But it's also just like, I really at some points in the beginning of the game, turn four, turn five, you want to put down just a good body that can trade with the opponent's board if you're kind of fighting for it and you can't remove their stuff. Devilfish has five HP, one armor, and fairly decent stats, as well as being threatening if they don't remove it the next turn, because now you're going to be flanking your sniper drone, your missile drone, or even the uh, broadside or broadside drones and enforcer battle suit drones. Um, they're all going to be threat more threatening if the opponent leaves this alive. Uh, the other flexible slot that I haven't really changed out, but I know some people have had success with similar lists, is the Crisis Bodyguard. Some people run two of them. Some people run one in Honor and Ethereal. Some people don't run any. So that's kind of just like at the four drop slot, if you don't have your self battle suit, you sometimes want something to protect an early sniper drone or an early missile drone still hanging on. And that's why I have one crisis. And then I've been happy with that so far, but I can definitely see people if they want some more defense, if they're having some problems getting their early units removed, um, another crisis can help too. Okay, so just to give a general overview, um, I mean, obviously there are different like types of tower builds. We've talked about battle suits previously. We've talked about kind of infantry theme. We've talked about sort of real drone heavy builds. What is it about this particular build that you think makes it, um, you know, really good and consistent for ladder? So, uh, yeah, I kind of gave this uh, build the, the moniker on value just <laughs> because I think that every card, if, you're, if uh, people saw our card review uh, in the last, uh, in a previous video, mm. I feel like every card in this list is either uh, a four or a five. Like they're yeah. all fantastic cards mm. alone in a vacuum without any cost reduction. You're still getting three for ones from your companion units. Uh, every unit is still pretty good on an empty board or to trade uh, if your opponent has things on board. 
just from like without considering any of the synergies. And then we have these um, obviously a lot of drone units. I think I did the count. There's like maybe 17 cards that reference drones in this list. Mm. Um, so Savior Protocols is going to be carrying a lot of work um, by giving you free tempo in the game when you can drop out free or one cost drones in the mid game turns. It's going to help you swarm the board and make it harder for your opponent to clear your board, mm -hmm. which is really going to be the crucial part in playing Tau effectively is making sure you are presenting a board that your opponent can't clear. And so leaning into the drone um, synergy there to make wider boards is one thing that has improved my performance using on Voss since I transitioned from a more battle suit oriented list at the end of last season. Um, but it's still not to say I'm going all in drones because that has been like the probably maybe the, the poster boy of of uh, Tau strategy. Um, one might say in the mainstream is like the drone spam, Omisos, just endless drones, shielded drones, board full of drones. While that is annoying, it I feel like a competent players and the ones that have been adapting the meta will be running a whole slew of board wipes and combo board wipes that can make that strategy not very consistent when you run into these people that have been adapting for the drone meta. So I'm keeping in, of course, the big battle suits that are just really good value for their cost. Broadside, Enforcer, um, Stealth battle suit. Like, you, even though this is has a lot of drone synergy, these four battle suits, two of them have companions, so that's already like drone synergy. And yeah. Stealth suit, these are just huge threats. Um, and value for their energy costs that you that are important to run um so that's kind of that's kind of the main thing and then of course i've got a lot of like i have a pretty full um i think i still don't have experimental drones yet but i don't plan on playing that card anytime soon i think i have a pretty full cow collection other than that and so i'm running a most of the legendaries i think are good mm -hmm. so there's a lot of those one ofs of course um but everything else is kind of like drone build or these powerful battle suits that are threats on their own um, and on a death reel doesn't make the cut, you think, post nerf? Uh, so I I might have had him inside his crisis bodyguard uh, before the nerf, but mm. I do like the immediate vanguard that mm. crisis bodyguard provides versus on a death reel requires you have one other guy on the field to protect him in a way. Mm. And now with the reduced health and reduced melee, he is a little bit easier for your opponent to remove if you don't have anything else. And so, um, yeah, I think... As tight as I've found this list to be, he doesn't make my cut, but people have been using him to affect, like he's certainly a bad card. And I, you could put him in a flex slot for sure out of out for a crisis or devil fish or whatever, mind you. Some of the some of the cards we you know we talked about a lot in our review last week, and some of the combos like things like carry on tactics, obviously comboing with uh, with the fusillade for your nice AOE and stuff. Mm -hmm. But are there any cards that you want to kind of draw our attention to that have just been absolute standouts, or perhaps the more you've played the deck, the more you uh, they've sort of grown on you and you've found good uses for mm -hmm. them? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it might be the best card in the faction, but Stealth Drone essentially combos with any other high value threat uh, unit, which is most of, actually most of them, uh, Stealth Drone Devilfish, mm. your opponent is going to face a bunch of flanking units the next turn. Stealth Drone Broadside, you're going to have three turns of six free damage if they can't remove the Stealth Drone early because it's stealthing that thing for two turns and it's got long range for the third turn. Um, you have Stealth Drone Sniper Drone early on. You're going to have that four un, um, no reprisal damage to pick off most units. So that is actually, yeah, you really want to look for that in the mid game to combo with any of your threats. If you haven't already um, grabbed control of the board, that's going to be a good way to take it back. Yeah, um, so and that's so good at almost any point in the game, isn't it, Stealth Drone? Yes, for sure. Especially, it gets even better when it's like z one or zero cost to sneak in on the same turn that you uh, play your Piranha. You sneak in a Stealth Drone, now your Piranha's coming up for the next turn as well. Uh, it's a great way to hide on Chi, because on Chi's reducing the cost by one. So if you, it's kind of like Piranha. You've already played one, mm -hmm. save your protocols, play on Chi, hide on Chi behind the Stealth Drone. Next turn, you get a um full board board spill with your hand because uh, of on cost reduction so 
And of That's course, pretty, now, yeah. now you've added the devil fish. You know, it's a, it's a great it's a great one for that, isn't it? In fact, you can even you know, against Tau, for example, you can even devil fish, bring on the stealth drone, kill an enemy drone because the, you can attack with the one attack from the stealth drone, only taking right. one damage back, and then obviously the stealth drone puts the devil fish into 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 hibernation. So it's it's just it's just got even better with that addition, I'd say. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then as far as anything else, I would just say that, uh, oh, the greater good probably is, uh, I mean, talking about Stealth Drone, the greater good is one of those cards that it was maybe one of the less interesting legendaries when I first saw the Tau. I'm like, it's kind of interesting. I can see it has potential, but I'm not really sure how to use it. But I've been playing it pretty consistently for um, the last couple of weeks. And I think this is like, I think this is like better than Humanity Shield, obviously now. Yeah. Uh, or honestly, yeah. now uh, since I played since I played Humanity Shield in both like a Calgar mid range and the Uriel Burn deck, this I think has, gets so much more versatility. Um, it's essentially a, at worst it's the Stealth Drone for a turn because you're saving any non Vanguard unit, um, and at best it is saving you um, a t uh, what is three twenty seven damage across the board. Uh, it is saving you your whole board of units if they're not vanguarded. It is letting you trade efficiently. Um, it is uh, blinking an opponent's turn sometimes. Mm. They don't have other stuff to go around that. So it, that is actually an incredible card for yeah. Anva. I would say probably most Tau builds mm. can find a way to use greater good effectively in any game. Yeah, because you weren't using it at first, were you? And I'm, I'm no. similar to you. I think it's one that's really grown on me. And you start to find lots of different ways to... to, to... To, to make use for it don't you um, yes for sure all right um so in terms of uh you know when you're uh mulliganing then with this deck are there some mm -hmm. key cards that you're looking for or yeah for sure the uh mulligan is really important uh because you definitely want to be doing things early on in the game at first, I saw on Vaughn, I'm like, oh, I can just spend my early turns banking abilities with my power. That seems really powerful. But you're giving up a lot of that early turn, especially your opponent is building a board. That's going to make it incredibly difficult for you to grab it um, later on in turns four and five. So on Va in the first two turns or three turns, you want to be playing something that is going to either help you take the board right away or capture you a lot of value down the road. And so... It's a little, it's actually incredibly matchup dependent. Um, depending, like you have, to, it, it's taken a lot of games in this meta and previous metas to, for me to get a good idea of what can I expect this Warlord most likely to be playing early units or be drawing cards of their own, etc. But um, if you are anticipating your opponent to be fighting for a board early, whether this be like a Galen or, um, you know, Chaos can put down early units. In fact, that's sometimes the most threatening is when they do put down an early unit and manage to keep it alive. Mm. So in those matchups, it's really good to be looking for um, Pathfinder, Missile Drone, Vespid Stingwings, something you can play early to get you some damage across the board. Um, even like if you, you don't want to look for it, but even if you have like Kion Tactics in your hand early on in the game, you do want to use this card to remove something if otherwise it means it's staying on the board because anything you can use as early removal is probably good for you. Mm. Um, as far as the so like, Chaos, value for card... example, would you keep Kion mm -hmm. Tactics? Uh, if I had other things in my hand that I could play later on for value, like if Kion Tactics was my way to remove their um turn one vanilla legionary that's gonna be the, the two two three guy then sure i'll keep that but if i just have kion tactics and like some expense uh, or um and nothing else to play early on then maybe not um because you're also it's kind of a toss-up because you're also looking for things like sniper drone that can also be good for the chaos so that's a little that's a that's a little later proactive play you're going to play at turn two to either combat their turn two or three threat of their own and hoping they can't remove it. Um, that's, a, that's a little riskier, but it can have a bigger long-term payoff. Um, so that, that that is kind of a, a tougher question for sure. I don't usually keep Kion Tactics, but like it's not a bad card when it is in your hand. And just like remember that it can be another 
pool to use early game, not just saving it to combo with Fusilade. So if you're going first, you, you, I mean, obviously a missile drone, you can drop proactively. Right. It's probably not, are you saying like going first, it's not as important to have something dropped on the first turn. Um, but if you are going second, you want to have you want to have an answer in the first turn. So that's where right. something like Pathfinder or Kion Tactics comes, in, comes into play. Yeah, that, that is a good analysis of that situation. Um, even uh, first turn, you can sometimes even play like, there's like combos of cards you want to keep, but you don't necessarily want to keep separately. Like if I hit a stealth drone, sniper drone in my opening hand, I do want to keep both of those, even though separately I might want to, not want to keep either because I know I can turn one stealth drone, turn two sniper drone. Now I have this guaranteed four damage threat to help start removing their, their early board if I think they're going to, Try to create an early board. So Another one. Sorry, uh, go on. Yeah, go on. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, I was because I was mentioning early, uh, previously that there's also like these more value-oriented starts you want to go for, and that would be like the Savior Protocols Piranha, which is probably the largest combo in this deck as far as like two-card value goes. That is like your ideal turn two to turn three curve if your opponent is not doing a lot to pressure your board. Um, so that's a combo you do want to keep together. Um, but maybe you don't keep a Piranha if the rest of your hand isn't looking great early turns. Like, if you have a Piranha and then two expensive cards, I would probably send that all back. But if I have a Piranha, a Pathfinder, and a Vespid, then I'm like, okay, my early game is on point. I can either hope to draw a Savior Protocol my second turn, or I'll just save this Piranha for value oh, okay. turn five, four or five. Interesting. So you don't necessarily just get rid of the Piranha if you haven't got the Protocols. You'll keep it if you've got a good early game and then play to try and draw into it but otherwise you probably would get rid okay yes so in terms of it's kind of two questions first question is about four drops because i was i often okay. find that when you're mulliganing um and because this is i don't know if you've used this term but you, you you essentially play it like a tempo deck don't you so um let's imagine you have got uh, or you know a missile drone or a three drop would you would you keep your four drops generally speaking are there any ones that you you kind of um i mean I'd probably throw away the fusillade don't you in most matchups right through Fusil fusillade i'm only keeping versus uh like oricon yeah. um because you need that for scarabs otherwise that can almost always be tossed back um stealth battle suit is Perhaps something I'm keeping most often is a four drop. Uh, the only the only time I would turn back a stealth battle suit is if I'm going second. I have no other early early card drops and nothing earlier than a, than that four drop, and I'm anticipating a very aggressive matchup because then you definitely want something still to do your turn one or two. So you otherwise, stealth much battle keeping that then. Yeah, otherwise it is self battle suit is probably the best turn three play you have if you haven't already played Savior Protocols into Piranha. Yeah, it's so good, isn't it? And the bodyguard, is that one you'd keep or not? Uh I yeah, I would usually not keep bodyguard. It's he's usually better to draw late game and combo it with another uh with like a devilfish or yeah. a hyper drone yeah. to protect it. Mm -hmm. Um the only time I'm keeping bodyguard is if I see a good line for me to have that protecting uh, early sniper drone that I played the previous turn that couldn't get removed for whatever reason. So like, if you're going second and have the guardian drone defense card, on your turn two, you can sniper drone defense card. So unless they have a lot of flanking on their next turn, they probably can't chip away your sniper drone. And then your your, your turn three, you play the crisis bodyguard to protect the sniper drone in the first for some continued time. That can be that can be one line where I keep crisis, but not not very often. And any of the five plus drops. I mean, I I generally keep long strike, for example, against chaos if I'm going second. I've got the four yeah. cards because uh, it's just such a key card in that matchup and really really wreck chaos. What about you? Any any of the sort of five plus drops that you you keep in any specific scenarios, or do you just generally get rid of them for the early curve? Uh, I am yeah, I'm tossing probably most of them. Uh, except for, I yeah, was exactly right, if you have the four-card hand versus Chaos, uh, Long Strike is a perfect card to pocket. I, I remember that being a lot like, if you're playing second as Eldar, you'd always keep Wailing Doom as like your finisher, because you have that extra card to hold on to the whole game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I definitely agree with you there. But yeah, oftentimes you want to pitch the expensive cards back for two reasons, actually. One, they're bad early game. Two... If they're in your deck, that's a higher chance you can cheapen them with emergency dispensation early on 
to make them an yes. incredible tempo drop. Yes, exactly. Um, For those who don't know, that's the choose. That's the legendary. Choose a troop in your deck, draw it, and lower its cost by three. Uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of offense cards, I often get asked about those. They're a little bit all over the place. Offense cards, aren't they? Um, are there any? Are there any that you actually select? <laughs> Might be the best way of putting it, because I think that the the general thing is you usually don't select any of them <laughs> and you sort, right. of, you sort of go with a normal match like a vanilla match but are there any specific ones that you you like to select so yeah they're actually i've been i've i kind of like the offense cards mostly i think they had an interesting aspect to the game and because i don't see other players using them i like to try to incorporate them actually more into my games because i think it's gonna make the other players have to play differently than they're used to which gives me an advantage um and so that being said, some of them are obviously not good for the strategy at all, while others can be really helpful. So yeah, we're going to start with Ultramarines. You actually pulled it right up. I recently got this uh, Tier 25 Thunderstorm. And that's an interesting one because uh, I guess the idea is that it kind of messes up Ultramarines by messing with their Codex curve. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, outside of that, really, it's just what this is doing is it's, it's letting the losing player play more cards sooner. They get more energy when their opponent gains a skull from knocking their health down to 20 and then 10. And so I'm thinking that against Ultramarines, they're playing early troops, they're probably trying to attack my life total. Um, they're burning me if they're ur ur Uriel. So I'm going to probably have a lower life total than them sooner in the game if things are going poorly. Mm. Um, and in that case, I want more energy to play more cards to come back. Uh, so I'm definitely taking Thunderstorm. And if I'm winning the game, then... I'm really not too concerned with the Ultramarines having one or two extra energy, especially if that is messing up their codex anyways. And you're not so in a rush if you're winning. You you can kind of, if you want to play around this and slow down, you sort of can because you've got the value anyway, haven't you? So you're not... You're right. Not with Anva, a lot of times if I'm winning and I don't, the opponent's not playing like board wipes, I can just build up a board, leave them at 25 health, and then burn, blow them up in one turn. one turn. Exactly. Okay, so Thunderstorm's the offense card you're looking for against Marines. Yeah. Uh, what about the Orcs? Uh... The orcs, I'm not too far in the orc uh, tower and the orc forge. Um, although, let's see, the uh, the first one is the random attack. That is almost never good. Uh, you usually want to be using your troops precisely, not randomly. So that I would never recommend that. Uh, the next one that I don't have, and I don't, I think sometimes the bots use this against me. Uh, this is probably actually quite bad for Tau because they like their ranged attack. Um, it messes with it, the squig it, buggy uh, from orcs, but I think it messes tower up more than anyone, right? Like for sure. I mean, it makes their drones it makes their drones unusable with those flankers if they have one attack. Yeah. Uh, so that that's really a anti synergy. Um, so we're not and looking I don't for even, any from the orcs, really, are we? I mean, I suppose. If I don't you know, know what their last one really is. If we got uh, deep, deep into it. Uh, oh, stun an enemy. I oh, know that's defense. that's a defense card. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, this one. So this is actually interesting. Um. I could, I could actually see you actually maybe wanting this as Tau, depending on how board-centric orcs are in the meta at the moment. Because if you think about this, this is giving your damage drones melee attack. Mm -hmm. And if you are building up a big battle suit and keeping its health high with Anva and its damage a little bit, it's getting more powerful. So I can actually see this being interesting to choose if I ever get to Orc Forge Tier 45 to <laughs> yeah, mess around say, with there's, that. There's not too many people who have probably unlock this at the minute it's probably the main up to 25 isn't it right um so the elder i've obviously got the uh, interesting kind of both player start yeah. with plus one energy do you, do you tend to take that with on oh. the first turn's not good with on generally is it exactly yeah i am always taking this with on and that is because if on could start every game at three energy for both players he would do that uh because you yeah your first turn unless you're having to play out a missile drone for early tempo, which you ideally don't want to do anyways, the first turn you're only hero powering for one health and passing. Yeah. So if you can do something else like play your saber protocols, emergency dispensation, play a sniper drone, um, even play a missile drone and buff its health immediately, all these things are better than just yeah. doing having your usual first turn. So yeah, that's a and on top of that it's messing up Galen's tempo. Yeah. He doesn't get her free unit for turn one. Um so it's, it's it's very good. Yeah, so that's probably a, a quite an easy one. Because the Necrons, you've obviously got the Solar Storm, which is uh, if any unspent energy 
deal one da enemy damage um, or you've got the earthquake if you've got to as far as 25 mm -hmm. which uh, I believe when a skull is triggered it stuns one at random yeah. troop so I have both of these and I can. I don't think I've ever played the Earthquake one in a in a ranked game. I can kind of see the use for it, but I don't think any of the matchups against Necrons really necessitate it at the moment. The Ping one is obviously very useful against Scarabs for a lot of factions. Um, it's even useful for Necrons to take against Necrons sometimes. Uh, but I would think as the Tau, especially as Anva, you have that one energy hero power. You have a lot of reduced cost stuff. You can usually fill out your energy every turn. So I don't think you're ever wanting to get a random ping for not spending an energy, as well as the fact that if your opponent is getting random pings, that can knock off shield from your units, which can be pretty bad. Um, that can snipe a one health stealth unit that you have, which can be pretty bad. So I'm not taking any of these uh, early of tier oh. off. Uh, except, I, I mean, I don't think anyone has unlocked it, but the the end tier Necron card that heals you, I was... I'm, I would. I really want to upgrade my Necron Forge just for this card because I think this is a really cool one. This uh, prolong the game, heal, heal every turn card. I think Cal would want one. this card yeah. for sure yeah. because you're just prolonging the game, letting you build a bigger board. It's got to get to rank forty-five then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Chaos. So Chaos have. Uh, I've just recently opened this one, which is the oh. uh, Hellfire Outburst, and I've used it a few times and has some pretty crazy because it's obviously. Weirdly, this can trigger when you trigger his skull, for example. Mm -hmm. This can do the damage, which then triggers your skull, if that makes sense. So you can actually, this can kind of like chain together and end up oh, right. obliterating the board, basically. <laughs> yeah, is it? I have not unlocked this, so I don't even think I've had a. Oh, I guess I don't play cast that frequently, so I wouldn't have a bot use this against me either. So I actually don't know how that one interacts, but that would be interesting to test out for sure. Mm. Um. um the other one is uh what is the offense one? Oh, it's the cheap uh cheap stratagem yes so i know some people say you don't ever want to take this against chaos and i would agree that with most faction most strategies you're not benefiting from reduced stratagem cost as much as the primary chaos strategies are benefiting from it because essentially you're giving them a free dark pact if they have an abaddon's chosen in their hand or you're making their hero power to give someone in the dark pack cost one so that it, there is a considerable threat you take on when give, when choosing this card, but for Anvan particularly because how stratagem focused he is, because his hero power is free with this out. Yeah. Um, free is better than one, isn't it? Free is better than one, mm. and also the uh, going back to the Eldar offense card, getting to play a three energy card your turn one, one of these uh, savior protocols or emergency dispensation is huge um even getting to bank an ability but getting a bank a shield card or an armor card with anva turn one versus just getting one hp is pretty big and so i would say this can lose you games against hell sometimes they will have better stratagems to reduce cost than you but i would say in the in the majority of my games i choose this card it yeah. is helping me more okay okay and then to me this is a weird one because um for example, like Acid Rain, I find is a terrible mm -hmm. thing to choose against Neurothro because obviously he can just ping for one energy and benefit right. quite heavily from this, but actually can be very good against Swarm Lord. What do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, I have not unlocked Acid Rain yet either, so I haven't used it. Um, I've had it used against me maybe a few times by the bots. I can imagine it definitely being good for if you are playing a ping Warlord. If you have a deck with a lot of pings or a lot of like damage AOE, like Necrons probably like just with Hexmark Destroyer, this becomes like a, a, a very good buff to that guy. But uh, I think that it would be very bad for what the Tau want to do, which is build up a resilient board and keep their guys alive. Um, this one and this, this one. This is an interesting one, actually. I probably played this more than I should have, especially during the uh, Uriel aggro meta into Swarmlord, because this one essentially is like both players are going to die faster. Mm. And that can be good for some factions and some strategies. That is definitely not what Anva wants to do, though. Uh. Um, you want to be... You might. You probably won't often have more health than Swarmlord, 
but in the event that you do, you definitely want to hold on to that in the game. You don't want to just chip it away just because you got some free damage against him early game. Yeah. If you're winning at Swarm Lord, it's usually going to be because you have built up a resilient protecting board and are beating him down, not that you won in a one swing turn on tempo. Yeah, yeah. So generally against two is you're not picking any of the offense cards then with Onva. Uh, with Anba, sorry, you broke up there. Oh, sorry, I break up. So I was just saying. So generally, then it sounds like what you're saying is you don't pick any of the offense cards with the Anba. Yes, yeah, against, not against, not first tier in it. Or... Oh, okay, okay, and then last but not least, just in the mirror match, I suppose it's worth asking about the mm -hmm. um, the obvious one being the uh, solar eclipse. It's early on, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Guess we're not uh, harmed too much from this, are we? Not at all. In fact, I built because of the impact this has on Tau right now, because I have, almost everyone has this card, uh, I built my deck specifically not to have any targeted um, stratagems at all. It's in fact kind of one of the reasons I even cut Dark Striders, because it's he's less effective if you're trying to use him against an enemy troop. Uh, so I, because I have z zero things that this impacts, I'm always taking it, because take on the off chance that my opponent does have a card, mm. Or I'm facing Shadow Sun, of course, and this is going to give me an advantage. All right. Um, I want us to jump into some games short, uh, shortly, um, but I just want to get your thoughts on a couple of key matchups before we do. But just to say to everyone who's uh, watching, if you're, if you're enjoying this, then uh, follow along with any questions you've got in the comments. Um, any thoughts on what you've heard so far, uh, please like the video. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, always appreciate that support too. So Barrett, let's just jump into uh, a little bit of talk about some of the key matchups in the meta right now. So the, the first one I want to talk about is Orcs because, um, you know, whether it's Gordrang or Zagstruck or um, Gazgul, Orcs can put out a pretty good kind of like... Um, somewhat control i suppose Gordran can turn up the heat on the and, and aggro you down if he wants to but he still runs right. the armor and the hard removals and everything so that kind of tough kind of removal lots of flanker or um, that can be can be quite challenging and especially people have started putting in more um uh squigs haven't they and things for for, for aoe for sure. and, and and sort of countering to the drone so so just in that map, that, that matchup, the art matchup, is there any, are there any kind of, you know, are there sort of two or three key tips that you want people to be thinking about? Right. Well, the orcs are perhaps like, yeah, the, the scariest opponent to face, maybe other than another really good Anva player. Um, because they, they honestly, they offer a, a lot of threats to this game plan in both their board wipes. I mean, Will of Gork is now cost eight energy, but. If the game drags on to eight energy or longer, that it's definitely coming down and resetting your board, which is a huge problem. Um, and the fact that on good draws for orcs, they can actually like play a pretty good aggro against Anva if you don't get your good early game cards, and they do, like Makari, some war bikers, um, an early this orc knob on tempo for that body that's hard to remove if they're playing first, like. I've I've definitely just been beaten down by a couple orcs sometimes, and that 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 can get you if you um you only do have three taunts or three vanguards in the deck, so you do want to kind of hold on to your life total for sure against orcs. But then that's the the flip side of that is if the game's going too long and you're not playing um, efficiently, they're they're outvaluing valuing your cards uh, with their board wipes you're going to run out of steam and they're going to eventually have a turn that they roll over you. Mm. So it's a very tricky matchup where you're really having to thread the needle between putting up enough pressure so that the orcs are always having to play a card um, to remove your board, not giving them a turn to play the armor card, or if they do, yeah. have have a wide board to really punish them the next turn. Mm -hmm. um, but also not over committing your board, making sure you always have a board refill plan in your hand so that when the Will of Gork or the Crump that gets Squig Bomb does come out and wipe, you have a you have some pressure to keep up so the orcs don't get the lead. Um, it's it's actually a, been a kind of annoying matchup at first, but is I've gotten to kind of enjoy it. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the orc players at the top ladder are really good, and they make for some really interesting gameplays. Um, as well as I feel like it feels maybe a little more fair, if not definitely 
I see an improvement in the matchup since the Orc nerfs, not being able to get the extra range from the Gaz ability has made Gaz less threatening. And now I do think maybe even something like Zagstruck or Gordring has a more favorable matchup into Tau than Gaz. Um, Gordring especially, that, that early aggro potential is already on the Warlord. So if you're not putting stuff early on down to make his world attack not your face, it's going to be a pretty dicey game. And I really like your description there, threading the needle. It's like a classic sort of mid-range versus control type of um, type of uh, approach where you want to be ahead, but you only want to be just ahead, right? It's like that. Like you don't want to be miles ahead so that you can will of gawk your board. You want to be just just ahead at all times so that he's having to respond and remove. But you're, it's, I think you said, not over committing to the board, and that that's a difficult thing to just kind of say to someone. It's something that people have to kind of practice. Mm -hmm. But I think, like, always asking yourself, what well, what what would happen if he will have got next turn? Like, you know, <laughs> have I right. just like thrown everything away? So sometimes you might find yourself on turn thirteen, uh, having you know four or five energy still to spend, and having a four drop like a crisis bodyguard. But you're not going to throw that down because you've already got a vanguard down, or you've already got too much value on the board you're already so exactly. far ahead so what's the point yeah and and, and again on var's pretty good for that thread the needle player because he can generate value from his ability right so you can just you say well i'll just bank myself another storm of fire you know i'll just do that i'll use my right. energy on that rather than just putting more units down to be removed with will of God. yeah totally yeah, that, um that, oh, the on. storm of fire just as a quick aside is actually a huge reason that the orc matchup feels far more winnable even once they've acquired the armor mm. is because once they've acquired the armor you can know even your units are trading poorly into the warlord sometimes like you don't really want your units to be doing less damage and still be taking two back so the ways to combat that are if you're not afraid of them clearing a board you can put armor in your guys but banking storms of fire um just one storm of fire is essentially going to negate their two armor and then everyone on top of that is going to let you present lethal with a relatively small board um, so that you're not having to overcommit to actually get within a lethal range of their, you know, 30 HP to armor monster. Mm. Um, you can bank two or three Storm of Fire to make, like, your board of three units, like, go in for, you know, something like 20, 25 damage. And even even doing that, if you don't kill him, if, if we were both sitting at, like, 25 HP and he's got two armor, and I can play a bunch of Storm of Fire and get him down to like 3 HP. Unless he's got all the heal cards in his hand and a really good comeback, putting pressuring their Warlord down that low can just be good because yeah, all you need is, a, is another Storm of Fire on your on your hero, on your Warlord the next turn to finish him off. And you've always got access to it. Right. I mean, I'm keen to get onto a couple of the other matchups, but but it, I think it's the first time you've mentioned that, that, that tactic of banking Storm of Fires. And that, you want to say anything else on that? Because it, it might be a bit of a... An unknown tactic that to, to sort of beginner town players, right? That that you can right. early on um, be doing. You can be doing that from early in the game, can't you? Yeah. So uh, because like probably the most unique and powerful thing of Anva is that his hero powers um, can create you a card um, from outside the game, and you hold on to it. So essentially, giving you permanent card advantage. And a lot of the time, early in the game, people are choosing the armor or the shield because it's cheap or the shield's even free to use the next turn for like some free tempo uh, for a nice trade. But in certain matchups, especially later on in the game, rather than grabbing a shield and like saving some damage on your Warlord or a unit, um, it getting the Storm of Fire is really huge because it's getting reduced cost. So it's only going to, once you've created it, it's only going to cost two energy. And it's essentially saying for two energy, you're dealing two damage times the number of units on your board because every mm -hmm. unit getting this buffed range and everything except on she has better range than melee so for the calculation essentially it's two times the units on your board that's how much damage that two energy card presents you so if and you even, can hold even, even on she is if there's a marker light it's better to go with range right if you go right yeah. that is that is true as well so um, quickly with just having one or even two Storm of Fires in your hand, as well as the one you can make for five energy on your turn, that is creating situations 
later in the game where you don't have to like build a board for two turns you can just build a board for one turn having these storm of fires from previous turns that you've saved and not used uh and then blow them up from 20 plus hp that they probably didn't even they they like good players are, are starting to calculate one turn a storm of fire against anva they're like okay i i have to remove like one more drone other than dead next turn uh but a lot of these players are not keeping track even of the cards you've generated from previous turns and haven't used yet so that, that's a really good way to get these surprise lethals if you will um much in the same way as ravenous hunter does in tier and it's i think i'm finally starting to see maybe the appeal of that strategy as well as the power that it truly uh truly threatens okay um so we've talked about orcs what about the chaos matchup abaddon I, I mean it's likely to change with the uh, reinforcement job coming soon For sure. we won't spend too long on it but just again any sort of general tips on so chaos is probably uh in general uh easier matchup than orcs i would say for for this on ball play style um although it definitely can feel like it run they, they have chances to run away with the game and you not be able to do anything about it more so than orcs because of the nature of chaos stacking dark packs onto a troop that is unkillable and continue continuously clears your board um the fact that I mean, the Tau do have coordinated engagement, but I'm not running it. It is kind of clunky unless you have a lot of Marker Light Synergy. And um, yeah. it's reduced effectiveness on with the camo offense card. So you don't have, you're not running any hard removal. Your, your only way of removing these Chaos units is by having a board. So that is like entirely what you, you do um, uh, almost always go like all in on the board against Chaos. Um, because that is your really only tool to remove their mid to late game threats is having some sniper units or a bunch of drones you can trade in. So early game is kind of is is that's probably like the like maybe the most coin flip early game is like what is the chaos gonna do? Are they gonna play a troop out, turn one or two and start buffing it, or are they gonna like sit there and draw a bunch of cards and then do something in, or later in the game? So depending on what you're thinking that most likely outcome is you're going to either be wanting to play your early sniper drone and missile drones to help you clear that or um, build up a wide board with saber protocols and piranha to like meet their mid game threat that they're going to drop um, stealth battle suit is incredible in this matchup because uh, it's very hard for chaos to remove it unless they're about to be able to play heldrick strike um, and it's going to offer you nine damage of reach on the next turn the five on the, on, on him and then the four from the guy he creates as well as usually those bodies at least one of them can survive so that's a really phenomenal card against chaos um long strike as we said of course we're keeping that uh if we have the four card hand uh we're almost always picking that off of di if we played dispensation during the game getting a five energy long strike against chaos is huge um stealthing a broadside battle suit to guarantee a six damage free trade is also huge. Um, banking shield cards early to keep our guys alive when we trade with their big guys is really important. Um, we don't have to be too worried of board wipes. Chaos does have a couple of board wipe combos for smaller threats. Going wide with drones can be scary, especially if we think they have the energy for bringer of decay and traitor's hate or double traitor's hate. But um, we usually don't want to be relying too much on a wide board against cast anyways we want a large unit to be able to shield trade into their large unit each turn and if we're ahead of tempo in that way then we can usually guarantee that chaos is never going to um overpower us on the board and usually win but if they do have a turn where they clear your board and then you cannot put up a resilient threat the next turn and they get the board back it can be really difficult to take the mid to late game um unless you have long strike so might be also where something like Devilfish might help you. Yes, uh, Devilfish, even though there's a one of Devilfish, uh, it has helped a couple of games against Chaos into, yeah, exactly, Sniper yeah. Drone or Missile Drone or something, give some more uh, damage. Or, and sometimes you even take a, a turn of hits and you just drop the Stealth Drone with yeah. uh, Broadside to claw back your way onto yeah, board. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, We'll jump into some games in a sec. Just, just anything on the mirror match. We're going to be playing against a lot of Tau. Are there, is, are there mm -hmm. any tricks or any any things you've learned to think about when you're playing the mirror? Uh, the when mirror I say match, mirror, I'm... that that could be also against Omasos as well. So sort of like mm -hmm. Onvar or Omasos. Yeah, you, you play a little differently against each. Honestly, the mirror match is probably the most, um, the most, uh, probably the scariest thing to walk into, just because 
it's really, really going to be all about like who who drew better and then who can play better off of their draw yeah. in a way that like sometimes they just have like the the saber protocols into prana and they're going first and like even if you had saber protocols on prana you're going second and your stuff is going to die to their stuff yeah. so going, going um, first is important and going first the, is very important and then that's because it, it really is like tempo on tempo isn't it so it's, it's how struggle a little bit to take the board back don't they so if, if you can be the one to take the board basically and going first obviously helps you to take the board then then you're kind of winning aren't you and um like you say those combos like get, if one of you gets save your protocols early and the other one doesn't <laughs> that can be a pretty big a pretty big deal can't it and again, again right. devil fish can help swing uh if, if that's not the case but it, it's it's you know, the biggest thing might be also to save your long strike um, until you're either dead if you don't play it or they play their long strike. Yeah. Because it's often whoever plays long strike last wins the game, the game yeah. if you get to play it at all. Because um, the worst thing that they can do is long strike through a long strike. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's a little bit of what we said about Orcs, about not playing, being ahead but not being too far ahead. There's a little bit as you get towards that sort of mid game, thinking about like that with the fusillade right because that's the only way like if you are ahead on board then mm -hmm. how do you lose well you can lose to the combo of carry on and fusillade right so it's i suppose you've got right. to be bearing that in mind a little bit as well yeah keeping track of their kind of fusillades ideally you're perhaps um if, if you're playing relatively even paced you're presenting them a board to bait out a single fusillade or a single kion kind of tactics to then like if you've gone down the game and you know they've used two kion tactics and one fuselage, you don't have to worry about the combo anymore. Yeah. Um, so keeping track of that can be important to, for later game playing around board wipes. All right, cool. Shall we jump into some games? For sure, yeah. Excellent. All right, well, if you're enjoying this so far, please like and subscribe. Let's uh, tell you what we'll do. We'll get rid of... Uh, we'll make sure that we disable bots. Um, and we'll let's go into some games. Okay. So we're playing in the 3-3, three, three, I think it was around 3-4-9-1, yeah, 3-3-9-1. Three, three, so we're about um, 35th on ladder, 35th. Oh, so we should be getting some... Oh, well, look, first thing we get is a mirror match. <laughs> mirror match, and we are going second. Vespid's going to so, be good for responding, isn't it? Vespid is crucial keep. We're pitching both of these battle suits. And then, I don't know, we could keep Long Strike or we could pitch it. Um, it would be good to have. We might draw it later, though, and we might desperately want something early on to play good. But we do have these Vespids to play turn two, so what are you thinking? Well, it is comeback, isn't it? And we are going second. I was thinking what we just said about... Maybe that. we keep it. Oh, oh yeah, this is, a, this is fine. I was, I was a bit... Oh, we didn't talk about this, did we? Um, but do you go... I usually go drone port. I'm keeping the gun drone because they might take camo. Yeah, that's that's pretty much been my approach. That offense card being what it is. And they do take camo. And they do take it, yeah. It's all right. Okay, so he goes with his fairly standard, fairly weak opening. Mm -hmm. So we have got an opportunity to drop if we want. What, but, but what do you think? Uh, we don't have a sniper drone to play into that cell drone, so it might just die on our following turn, so I think we're saving that. I think we just hero power here. And One pass. of the things I, I wonder about this, this type of opening is, mm -hmm. like, playing the drone part now and stealthing it, then mm -hmm. next turn dropping the Vespid next to the stealth drone so that you've got the, um, the drone port now is blocking them killing the stealth drone if you like and this is stealth mm -hmm. and then you get the stealth again and you that could be that you drop the piranha for example or, or we, some or, yeah or something we, we probably do have three turns of protection for that so we could do that um if we play that piranha on curve four depends how important you think it is to have the board you know we were just talking about the mirror match about tempo that would be the tempo play right but mm -hmm. depends whether you feel we need it here well, you do might want to grab that early if you want to do that, yeah. Try that? Yeah. Got it. Put the stealth drone next to Anva, yeah. Next to Anva. 
I like doing this because now if we get to use an Envoss Hero Power once, Stealth Drone is going to be out of range of just one Hero Power attack. Right. Yeah. So it's going to be, it's going to take a whole unit to straight into it, a whole troop, um, or it will survive another turn. So we want to be playing the Vespid in the middle then, in the middle of those two. Yes. And, and, and we could draw our emergency dispensation, we could draw Sniper Drone. Okay, this is nice, this is very good. We have a better turn 3 play than Piranha. So yeah, I would I would say we probably... Um, what could they do? Mind. Yeah, we probably drop this for Tempo as well, since we already... Uh, we definitely want the Stealth Drone protected by the Vanguard. we attack with anything? Do we... uh, I don't think we trade face here, we don't... Um, not enough has been decided yet to know if we're gonna need our help later on. Oh, I think your stream is lagging for me real quick. Okay, oh, no. I'm caught up now. Oh. Don't do this to me, Ooh. internet. Okay, I think we're back. Are you with us? I'm here, yeah. Oh, you're back. Okay. Right. All right, this is a turn of decisions. So many things we could do here, right? So I'm inclined to play stealth battle suit and what you, oh, attack yeah. with the stingwing. Oh, the stingwing is going to, maybe we don't attack with the stingwing because it's going to be stealth. Yeah, I think we, we play the battle suit. Our drones are going to die, but we have a stealth singling and a self battle suit and a two four next turn and our hero power to take back the board if he uses so I, yeah, I think self battle suit it's a very it's actually good to be playing second on stealth battle suit because yeah, yeah, his stuff comes off of self first. Well I'm wondering so is whether we put it here or there, because if we put it if we think he's gonna take out that then the, would it would it get re would it, Oh, oh that's my. actually a good that's actually a good point. If we want that to survive, uh, because next turn when we put play hero power, the body, go the crisis uh, battle is going to go on the other side anyway. So we'll, we'll still get value out of on boss hero power. And I think we we do want it to be stealthed um, okay. eventually if we have to trade our stingwing. This is a very weird opening, isn't it? <laughs> like this is a very strange start to the oh. game. But I say that, but then again, he is probably going to remove the Oof. stealth drone this turn. Oh, and stealth drone that, interesting. Hmm. All right, so the options here are we can fusillade to remove his stealth drone so that way we can have a chance of clearing the support turret next turn um because that's going to be a big hamper to our early game plan if we can't um if we have to keep dealing with that for multiple turns uh it's a little dangerous now because he has a chance to take back board but if we do damage all units the vespid stingwing can melee clear or actually we can even maybe take this we start using our face to save our unit hp um we clear with Anva, the battle suit and melee, and then hero power. Maybe it still should have been the other side, but this will be better than. So you want to go fusillade over crisis? Yeah, because we want to be able to clear this, uh, the support turret next turn, um, and not give it stealth for a whole another turn. We clear this with Anva, right? Yeah, we want to keep our board healthy, um, and then hero power. We hit for two damage here. I think we want to keep our board healthy. Uh... Got all this combo just sitting there. Thinking back in retrospect, it would have been a little better to place a battle suit on the other side, so it would have gotten that health from the previous turn. Yeah. yeah. Because we didn't end up playing the power, although that is because of what the opponent decided to oh. do. Oh, gosh. 
Oh wow, that was the dispensation to that. Wow. Well, one health wouldn't have helped that much either. So pretty behind here. Um, Very behind. It's it's quite it's quite impressive well, that we played the tempo line and took the board and that we've ended well, up he, this far he played behind. The, he stalled us a whole turn with a support turret stealth and now this is, has also the, the dispensation long strike. This does feel so good in the mirror match. It's good when you protect it. He had the stealth drone combo. Yeah. If, we, if he didn't have that, it would have been unplayable. I think here, I think we just have to trade in to hit the drone and then maybe play out a piranha just to save us some life and stall on board. And we're not, it's going to... we're not bothered about getting rid of long, long range. Uh, at, uh, he will hit the port. Let's see. Because I'm thinking what we would do here is we have to stall the board till we play our long strike to clear yeah. it out. I'm not sure if we're having an effective way to clear it otherwise. And I think we play a piranha here and just like hope that this is going to slow him down a little bit. This is why I say we didn't want to trade with our eight warlord earlier uh, into his face because we have no idea when how how long we'll need our HP to hold on. I mean, if you play something like a Enforcer Battle Suit here, it's probably not looking great. Mm, okay, giving it Vanguard. That's that's not great. Now that turret's gonna be. Well, I would say we would emergency dispensation for long strike, but we already have that in our hand, and it costs eight. <laughs> I think oh. we're pretty screwed here. Um, yeah. I mean, I just I don't know that we can stall for another turn. I mean, could we? I don't even think we can remove anything on his board because he's got that nine HP Vanguard, and I think what's that lethal ten. The only thing I 16, can think of is going twenty six the... damage. It's got lethal. Yeah, I guess we just try to play a Vanguard. That's yeah. what I was thinking. We've got to look for the six drop, haven't we? The, the the vanguard, which we haven't got. Oh, oh, the cr cruelty. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah he's got lethal. Nice. Well, that is. Um, we saw the value that, of that, uh, emergency dispensing. We saw how good Anva was on the other side of the battlefield. <laughs> uh, emergency dispensation long strike. I guess that wins you game. I guess if you play your long strike first and you win before they can even play their long strike, that is also how you oh win the game. Oh my god, we got another one. <laughs> oh, we've got a chance for redemption, Barry. Chance for redemption. We do. All right. Yeah. Um. All right. I like this a lot better. Uh, we have something way better to. I think. I'd keep that. Hand. <laughs> we've got double combo. It's like, yeah. Is that such a good combat mechanic and that's such a good proactive start? I don't know. I agree. Yeah, I think I think we probably keep this. We have something to do for our first three turns just with the stealth and sniper drone. Yeah, this is okay. So I think we save the. We definitely we, yeah we want to save we want to play the stealth drone first I believe, um, without the guardian drone, oh, so yeah. that we can. Sniper drone stealth and guardian second turn. Sure. That and pass, yeah? Yeah. He's hitting our face. God. Come on, Onva. We owe you a little bit of revenge last match. I kind of wish the, um, the defense cards made going second a little less terrible. Because uh, even the Guardian drone isn't. Oh, okay. This is interesting. This is interesting. Well, I think there's a couple of things we could do is we could drop the sniper drone and drop the tide wall and actually trade those into that. Or we. Is, we've still got this protected, right? From the. From the, um, from the tide yeah. Wall. That is probably safer because they, they don't, 
Tao doesn't have a way to... I, they have best fitting Kai on attack. It's the only way they could clear a cyber drone that turn. Um, yeah, it, even though it might not feel great sacrificing stealth drone like that, it is probably ideal because we're, we're taking tempo and playing down a per, uh, protected proactive threat. So otherwise, you'd be talking like great and good and carry on tactics well, and trade that. Otherwise, it would just be hit, take out, uh, take get rid of uh, long range with our hero let it stealth sniper drone and play down the guardian drone but if that happens they they could potentially heal up and and save their sniper drone so yeah i think we we could we clear their board and play our defended sniper drone They haven't played Saber Protocol, so they can't Piranha spam the board. I'm thinking at best here, they play Stealth Battle Suit. Okay. Well. I'm kind of happy with that, right? Because I'm sure he, he gets to remove the it's like. Okay, interesting. Um. Well, a couple things here. A great, a good turn. I don't think it's a great, a good turn because we can we can clear the board with Kaimon tactics, um, if we wanted to. Uh, we can clear the board and uh, bank a uh, hero power or give shield to sniper drone. Um, turn five plays. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not thinking of anything super threatening other than like a, just dropping a broadside um, that they have. Which could be a little scary, but I think that we could remove that as well. Um, so yeah, we can either leave them one unit with one HP and play just the Piranha for tempo, or we can buff a hero power, bank a card, or shield sniper drone and trade for board with Kion Tactics. To you, man. Uh, so yeah, I think let's let's try that. Let's uh. We Attack him? one of the guys with Cypher Drone. Uh, I guess the, uh, yeah. Or no, 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 the, uh, that. Okay. That's fine. And that, and we'll, uh, make shield. Oh. Trade. You want shield, yeah? Yeah. And then we can shield the Cypher Drone if there's time or save it. I think this works pretty well. I think at best here he plays broadside and gets rid of our long range, but I felt like yeah, a really happens. awkward. I felt like a really bad turn for us. Well, we used one of our cards to clear one of their cards. Yeah, it's just because we're sitting on this combo, which is so good against Tao. Well, we have another carry on tactics. Like that's that's one thing is like you can you can save the combo, but you can also just use it as an efficient. Okay, yeah, this is a great turn because he had to shield his guy and he's playing a stealth. Okay, interesting. So this is very interesting. I mean, the um, devil fish is a real threat because if he doesn't deal with it, the next turn you've got um, piranha. Well, we need to think. Why did he play that stealth drone? And like I'm thinking, is it a broadside to play or on she or something that is going to rip into whatever we play this turn? But then we can just play Cat Greater Good if he does that. That is also true. That's a good idea to protect our board. So, so we, if we went Devil Fish and then he went on she, then we'd play Greater Good, and we'd still have, and we have the, four energy left over. And then we'd have charges anyway online. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can see this be a, this is a good turn to drop Devil Fish to because this is like the turn where you want a big body on the board, uh, just to build your board, but necessarily like you don't necessarily want to sacrifice a long range on broadside this this soon, and we can't get any value out of his companion. So this is this is the turn probably with Devil Fishes. Yeah, you're happy with Devil Fish? It's a good drop. Yeah. Okay. And are we attacking with anything or not? No, we are oh. saving our HP. So we did lose long strike, didn't we? Even though long range, I mean, even though we had right. the shield, you still you still lose that, don't you? I mean, it's yeah, but this is still a uh, pretty, pretty. I mean, it's essentially trading for four unless he's got some flyers. Still a nice, a nice unit to have on our board. 
The only thing I might say, the pre... Well, no. The other turn, that was good. Okay, he's buffing that. Okay, he's not going to play anything that scary this turn either. I think this is looking... Okay, he's banking a Storm of Fire. No, he's playing Storm of Fire. Oh, he's playing Storm of Fire. That's incredibly interesting. So, did he, we... did he bank anything last turn, or did he use shield? shield? He used shield on himself to trade to protect his life, which is also... I wouldn't have done that. I would have just taken four damage early to save resources. Oh, man. This is fine. We can uh, just Piranha and play the drones normally. That, that's... Uh, we can have four, four the, troops on board. He has only, an empty board. The only other thing I was thinking is... We could... Do we, do we save your protocols and great a good here? And then, as he develops the board, that would mean next turn we could broadside him and attack with Missile Drone. Mm -hmm. it's clear, um, clear. Including we if he could, plays stealth. We'd be we able could. I would, I would pre in the mirror match, I pre prefer to save greater good for a, a more influential turn. Uh, yeah. Like right now, he does not, doesn't even have the energy to play Long Strike yet. So I'm not too worried about him dealing with our board next turn as long as we make it a little wider and more threatening. Because uh, yeah, Piranha is also kind of like playing Saber Protocols if it survives. If it doesn't survive, that means he spent energy to deal with it. We're hitting for five. Um, like a one. Yeah, it would leave us at two. Um, but then again, if he mark lights that, well, if he mark lights it for two, or maybe we don't hit then. I, I'd say it's probably safer not to hit. We have a solid control aboard, and we have a fine number of resources compared to theirs in hand. So I think as long as we play for making our board more resilient and getting in efficient damage when we already have good solid board control, that's probably the winning game plan at the moment. All right, so going to send another stealth drone on this. Okay, that's a second stealth drone at least. And we have a whole turn to see this, so we can armor up. Oh, this is man. really good. Do you know what, as well? I've just realized in that other player that we were on about, we would have got rid of this with the, um, the double missile drone, right? But we can only play one now, I think. All right? No, we can play two. We would... Well, we oh, actually we have that anyway. Nicely. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we're playing the broadside, right? And stealth drone to kill... Oh, no. I can't do that, because they're both stealth. Are we just going to hit with this, are we? Mmm. And you... Getting, actually getting rid of this, are we? So it's not too threat. Well, because the stealth drone is annoying. We what about Storm of Fire? Go face. That's 10 plus. Our board is 23 damage. Okay, put him at 6 HP. And then, and then greater good. The thing is, that, that then wipes us out, doesn't it? It would it would clear us uh, on the next turn, yeah. I I'm also inclined to say armor here, um, armor with the hero power and play saber protocols or or yeah, just play saber protocols and armor up, make our board resilient, and then his, his thing's only doing one damage to all units, which is not too bad. Um, trade in with the one HP gun drone because that's gonna die anyways. Oh, uh, we could, yeah. It's got two armor now, so. We do it with uh, this as well. That as well. We could, yeah. He has, I don't think he has a lot of flankers. Oh, the only sure. scary thing is something he might um. He might leave something scary behind that stealth drone next turn, but we'll have to see what that is. A long strike, perhaps, but we have our well, it would be stealthed. We'll have to see. Okay, he's gonna get some. Vanguard in here. But not a lot of reach. This is why I'm wishing we kept the guy on tactics for the combo. <laughs> Mind you, we still. Wait, have we still got. Yeah. We still got flying. Now we have three missile drones. <laughs> yes. um, so I think that's a good enough combo in itself. Um, it's be, hasn't it? I think that's. I think we got free missile drones into greater good. Um, actually, I want to think really carefully how we clear this. We don't. I want to send the missile drones at the vanguards. Uh, five. Send one over there. Oh, 
I don't think we're clearing the support turret, unfortunately, because we can't hit twice with two missile drones over there. But we did, yeah, we definitely plan the broadside out, um, regardless. And then it's just thinking how we're best going to trade with the playing of these free drones for sure. And then how do we want to trade with them? That's the real question. Play them both out because I think we're trading the Piranha into the Enforcer battle suit. Um, yeah, we're, we're doing that, and then we're hitting one drone in the middle of the Guardian pack. Gonna heal off away. Gonna heal. Yeah, heal that. So I would throw the Piranha at the Enforcer. You want a shield? And or do we want to just use Greater them. Good? We use Greater Good, don't we? And then clear the stealth. Oh no! Oh, we ran out of time. Am, am I lagging? Or... I don't know what happened there. It seemed like we just ran out of time very quickly all of a sudden. We should have killed the... I should have killed this, this with this. And then I would have put six on face. Yeah, and then we would have greater good. We'd have had the game there. We might have lost it now. Have I lost you, Barry? Uh, I, can you hear me? I, yeah, I don't I, know if I was lagging there or not coming through. I can so hear. I was trying to give I, advice. I think we might have. Um, I don't know what happened there because it just kind of like seemed to like it just jumped and we just ran out of time all of a sudden. There's a lot going on. I think we're still in a fine position here. He's spending a lot of energy. I think we have an enforcer battle suit to our next turn. Uh, we're going to be playing that thing on what we draw pretty quickly. I mean, we had the game won pretty easy. Obviously, yeah. if, it, if it wasn't for whatever the hell just happened. Which is a real shame. Okay. Alright, yeah. Uh, you might not like it, but I think we're playing Kai on Tactics without Fusilot again here to clear that, <laughs> uh, clear the support turret. And then we're playing um, both of the drones on the ba enforcer battle suit so yeah we're clearing that with our warlord the support turret and then we're playing enforcer battle suit and dropping one drone outside and one drone inside on, or on the other side of Anva, just because that way we'll get double value out of the health buff here and i think we're looking at all right here because we still we still have both of our crucial um singular like tied turning cards and greater good and long strike so if we get him close enough down here we can just drop a threat and drop long strike or or greater good um behind each other Let's see can you click his war okay no he doesn't have a saber protocol out yet it is something i don't i guess maybe some people know this but if you're ever forgetting whether or not your tau opponent has played or how many saber protocols you played you can click and It'll usually show up there. I was talking to the audience. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Okay, so it's kind of like we already we already won this once. <laughs> but we're going to try and win a second time. <laughs> well, I think we were winning right here. He doesn't seem to be doing anything except yeah. building a wide board, and we yeah. have... We've got it on lethal. We have six plus our damage on we have 18 damage actually we have 20 damage because we have fused a lot in hand yeah Whew. Whew. even with that connection pick yeah, up we don't know what happened it just sort of seemed like we had time and it just sort of jumped didn't it never mind we got there we got there just goes to show like how far ahead we were though actually yeah, I mean, this this guy was building a wide board here, but he wasn't. He didn't have the the reach that Tau needs when they're behind. So even though he probably had it was ahead of us on value on board, he was behind the life race and couldn't clear us. Yeah. Let's see if we can get a non onva. That will be exciting. Oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no. Okay. Too soon. Oh no. <laughs> this is interesting though. Um, we have our saber protocols. We're going first. Um, so I'm 
Generally, we don't keep the devil fish, do we? Not keeping the devil fish. Uh, I would say maybe don't even keep piranha or sniper drone here because I think we kind of want piranha. Ideally, if we're, we're almost okay. Well, look at that. Perfect. Probably picking camo here. Oh, look at that. Was this the only so, time when you would play Savior over Sniper Drone on three? Uh, it's because we have Piranha the next turn. Uh, because we have Piranha and I'm not expecting them to do a whole lot on their turn three, like maybe they'll try to go for an early game tempo push like we did our first game. But as we saw, that can be overcome, especially if we're going first and already have the energy advantage. And now we have a massive energy advantage at the Saber Protocol throughout the rest of the game. So we've banked ourselves a lot of value. And while people, it, it, or I've thought before that Saber Protocols later in the game might be a better idea because you might have some extra energy to spare, but it's actually way harder fitting in a Saber Protocols late game than it is on turn three. So now, yeah, they've played the support turret to kind of punish us. But um, honestly here, do we want to? I'm thinking like, how are they? How much are they going to protect it next turn? We could hit that and then just play out the piranha and hope they probably they don't get only clear two drones. And they probably can't clear that body unless they have blinkers. Could even play this. And if we definitely want to play the the piranha here because we need these gun drone pings to help us pick off the support turret if if they stealth because they're probably going to protect it next turn. That's the only reason I would play a support turret on curb like that. Put that over there in case he picks out the piranha. Right, right. That's, that's, that's good. Got they usually do. A little healthy. Because now, if he's going to clear one of the gun drones, he's going to bring that down to two for the other gun drone to ping it off potentially, even if he defends it. Like if he plays Crisis Bodyguard here, that might not be great for us. This card is so good in the mirror. Oh, Dark Strider. Okay. That will work. Okay, now I'm pretty sure here we want to just play this Devilfish out. Um, really? It's gonna be a, it's gonna be, I mean, whatever we play is gonna be taking one damage from the turret. Uh, it's gonna have camo because we took the offense card so we can't Dark Strider remove it. So at best he can do one, two, four damage to it, or no, he can clear it if he if he swings his whole board into it and his hero, he can clear the devilfish. Um, versus anything else, he will still have some of his board left. And if he doesn't clear the devilfish, it gives us something. I guess we could, if we want that later in the game, we could just throw the broadside out there. But whatever we throw out there, it will take his whole board to clear it. Otherwise, he's just going to start snowballing the board. Just the only thing I'm wondering is because we got the. So we're going to have another protocol as well. I'm just thinking Devilfish could have some super powerful synergies here, right? Because you're going to have such cheap drones. Yeah, so. we... But then again, you could say, well, you, then you'd get those out cheap. I don't know. Uh, uh, you, you decide. What would you do? All right, let's... Um, We do have two broadsides, so let's, let's maybe just try to throw the broadside out instead and yeah. say we can draw the other one later on for value because that will soak his board and then we swing in with the that thing that's going to die and save our HP. It's a little toss up there, but you're right. We do have cheap drones. And if we can get the Devilfish plus Pathfinder with free drones later in the game, could be a, a good tempo swing for us to save on too. Okay, he's gonna mark a light through the camo. So that's gonna be, he's gonna have to hit it with his Warlord and Dark Strider at this point. Still doesn't have cheap drones. So unless he's gonna play one Marker drone. I was thinking next turn we could save your protocols and play out the path, full Pathfinder set and the Sniper drone. Yeah, or save Sniper drone for or the save Devilfish. That and just heal. Yeah. Choose a heal, yeah. Okay. Wait. Did he. Did he. Wait, can you go to the, the log? How did he kill that? Oh, we played Kion Tactics too. Okay, so we played two cards to remove the broadside and we got rid of Dark Shredder. So that was a fairly good trade. 
we get one drone. Okay. So yeah, I think we counter this for sure with um, three, yeah, three drones. Oh, oh, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter what order because we can. Yeah, I was so thinking we, we play we, Saber for, we, first. We drop this on the support turret for sure. We need to clear that. A little R2D2, don't we? Yeah, R2D2 of pain. Just get rid of him. And now oh, we can play our Saber protocols and get our free drones now. It's going to be huge for the rest of this game. One on the other side of Anva. And now I would next time I'd, I would put the both the drones next to Anva because we probably want to know a little more HP than the that's true. We should have done down that. there. It's a but it's fine. It's fine to, to buff these guys. Still as well. heal and keep the sniper drone though, don't we? Yeah, sniper damage. drones, devil fish now for one energy is going to be. Yeah, I, I I think that was a good call on your part to save devil fish because now that we have so such cheap drones, the rest of the game it's going to be. Yeah. Massively more important than that one broadside. Yeah, definitely, and um, with long strike as well. Um, we've got good comeback here. Oh my god, if we draw into a stealth dr a stealth drone, it's gonna be insane here. This in fact, that is what I want to draw. If we draw a stealth drone here, this is this is just Sometimes I would even emergency dispensation for stealth drone, even though you kind of lose energy there, it sometimes it's that good. Oh, they're playing some other emergency dispensation, the so the we'll let's hope that's not long. Okay, we're gonna see what it is right away. Stealth battle suit. That's pretty good for them. They're behind. Um, it makes us definitely want something with stealth now. Or so, okay, the, the second Pathfinder with no drone value, that's pretty good for us. They're gonna clear that guy. That's actually pretty good for us too, that they're not clearing yeah. a marker drone. I mean, he's used he's used two oh, Pathfinders no. now, and a Kalyon and a Tactics, and, he, and right. he's gonna see a Devilfish in a long strike soon, and he's gonna regret that, isn't he? Indeed. Okay, we got this. Oh! Okay. This, this might be the oh, turn for Devilfish. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. Know, I'm thinking that as well. The only problem is it's going to get taken out by the flankers, but still, it's going to trade well into those as well. So, so at at best, if it gets taken out by his flankers, it's because he has put shield and uh, an attack with his warlord, and then he only gets to take out one of our other th three drones. So I think this is good. Yeah. Oh, actually, we can give it health HP. We would definitely want to keep it next to Anva here. I think for positioning, we want to put out, um, that guy's going to have one HP, so we want him on the outside after he's done trading, so yeah, we can put him outside the Devilfish, and Sniper Drone definitely put next to Anva on the other side, because uh, we want to make him beefy, and then we'll heal them up, and then start attacking. Uh, this hits this, right? Yeah, that's going to go there. Our... Um, I got a sniper drone. Okay, they got the other guy. Just, so it's just, free. Oh, no, no, no. The sniper drone is free. Oh, it is. Yeah. Like that. Just leave it there, I think. And then we'll save our HP. Yeah. The board could still go either way, although we are looking pretty solid at the moment. Now we now we can't even clear the double fish unless he uses both of his his stealth suit and his flanker on it. Yeah, we'd be pretty happy with that, to be honest. The the plus HP buff is. That's you. It's usually critical to put the armor guys closest to on box because you're just doubling the mileage of your HP bonuses. That's such a good tip. Yeah. Hope you were all listening to that one. <laughs> that is because you, you literally are just doubling the value out here. And, and in a way, it's more than double because it's with it being a devil fish and giving flank to future cards. It's just a real headache for him. This card. I don't know what he's. Gonna... We've even so we, played... we've even got camo on it thanks to him. <laughs> So even, yeah, even that, if he had some like coordinated or something, it's like, oh, damn it. <laughs> well, well, I think we're we're going first. We pick camo. Oh, he, is he gonna do it? Then is he going? To... Wait, so the question he... is, will he make will he make this shielded, shielded or will he play something yeah, else for three energy? He's gonna make the shield, isn't he? But even if he makes it shielded, we can still trade into it pretty well with the sniper drone and then the missile drone, uh, flak. Oh. oh, interesting. Oh, what, wait, what did he do? Oh, he went melee, right? Wait, he can't do what? that. Oh, did he real? Did he not realize about the camo? I mean, he played it with his warlord. Oh, he can for still sure. play with the warlord, so maybe he did. Or the Vespid. Uh, Vespid should attack the sniper drone in melee. Was what it should have done, but okay. Ah, yikes! Yeah, he should have attacked the devilfish melee with his warlord and attacked the sniper drone melee with Vespid. But we'll take it. All right, we're getting close to setting up. Oh, okay, this is tricky because actually. I don't know if we want to drop our long strike. We kind of have to for tempo. Uh, yeah. We could. 
And we could you know what we could do is fusillade and then armor up our board. That is probably a little safer than dropping long strike because if he has long strike in his hand, it's worse for we, we lost. Just, we don't just bank a storm of fire. We could bang a storm of fire as well. I'm just thinking we want to keep our stuff alive a little bit. Uh, we five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. We got lethal. Oh no, we have. Oh, we can't. We haven't. We can't afford it. We could get a storm of fire now. We'd have lethal. We got bang on sixteen, but we can't. We want it. We want energy up. Right. So armor, or do you want to bank the storm of fire? Armor's a little bit safer. Storm of fire, if we don't think they're gonna remove our board. So armor. Yeah. And I would smack his face with ours um, in melee. Get that life closer, a little get the life total a little closer. Yeah. Now our board is hard for him to remove without playing some more flankers, but I don't think he has many of. Even if he's, he would have to Kion from uh, Fusilla to remove the Sniper Drone even, but she's already used one Kion. Interesting, okay, my have a Piranha play there. Piranha, the Sniper I'm, Drone. I'm, I'm going to have to go back and watch Barry. One of the things I don't think I've quite mastered yet with our Barry is when to use the armor. Uh, it's mm -hmm. really, really interesting. Um, you've, I think there's been two good, good games now, two good moments where you decide on the armor and I Actually, yeah, that's really good. But I just not thought about it at all. I think it's like the um, gotten stepchild of the family, isn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the I armor. mean, armor is certainly much more powerful in certain matchups and not very good in others. Like, don't take it much against the orcs because they're usually in a hard AOE. It can be good against the squigs, but um, in the mirror match, it's just making your troops better than theirs, which is pretty important. Versus the Eldar, if you put armor on your board, it's it can't do much against the armor, so you're pretty sad. And it's also saving your drones from like traitors hate against chaos. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. But with so we have this game over then, yeah. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, with storm of fire. Yeah, if we hadn't given armor there, his missile drone would have removed our sniper drone. But no found lethal nice that's how you can win the Anva mirror when you go first yeah that first game was a very odd very odd game very odd start he drew long strike from emergency dispensation there were a lot of things that were strange about it let's see if we can get a non onvar game that would be good for the master class wouldn't it it would <laughs> surely we can't get four in a row Oh, that was brilliant. A lot of a uh, lot of good decision points in there. That, that, that I armor. mean, yeah, it was it was like even in the in the end there, like the the decision of which hero power to choose, kind of decided whether or not they would die or get another turn to clap, um, stay on. Like we didn't play a long strike there; they didn't have a long strike of their own. But like, and it, that was just from experience. I know that if we do play long strike on eight and they haven't played theirs yet, then get encountered by that. If we don't already have a bunch of other stuff on board, can be pretty, pretty unfortunate. It's such a big swing, isn't it? Yeah, because you you Indeed. think you've got the tempo and you're pushing lethal, then he kills your long strike and then he kills someone else with it. Okay, it's another town, but it, it is our main source. Mm -hmm. So I think we're keeping Stiglings and dispensation. Uh, I'm not sure about. Piranha or Kion Tactics. I, mean, this lets I don't us... really want to spend Kion Tactics to remove their turn one drone. That doesn't feel great. I think, yeah, I think we uh, turn that in and hope for like a Missile Drone and Pathfinder or Savior Protocols. Okay. Well, Strike is not bad to see. I want the Guardian Drone because he could pick Camo.
like it now I'm gonna drop the marker drone we could we could try the stealth drone tidewall drone early tempo play that we did against Anvar. I think it would be more effective against uh Omisis because we can guarantee they're always gonna be playing drones early on and then we do have stealth battle suit to shore up our mid game that we've played these early units so yeah, I think that's to... against Omisos, you definitely want to play a little more aggressively than we, uh, than on, than the, the on bomb here. Yeah. So yeah, I think we can try that, we can try that plan again, see how it works so here. We're trying the same chess opening. <laughs> it didn't work for us last time, but let's see if we can get it to go this time. Actually, quite nice too because now we're saving our warlord from the marker light. Pretty good because we can even start turn four. Uh, okay, so yeah. we want to put this guy here, right? Or yeah. Do we, so we, we want to do we want to emergency and look? So this is yeah, this is probably where the choices come around. That would be a little a little greedier for like a, a, a mid game tempo value play, but I think at the moment we have board, we probably want to hold on to it, especially because like. We want we want enough resources to clear their support turret early on, or have a big enough board we can armor up through through the support turret, and we want to save this stealth drone another turn I believe, which otherwise is going to die when the when the our vanguard gets stealth. So I think yeah we want to sting wings here and just attack their drone in melee and leave it at that. Because at the moment he has to play something. Uh, reactive to even get rid of our vanguard. Oh, we did play savior last turn. I didn't catch that. Well, I'm glad we have a wide board now because we're going to need it. Um, I think... Let's see, we're definitely trading our Warlord and Melee Stingwings into that Piranha. We need to get rid of that ASAP. And then I guess we're leaving our drones to block shots. Um, is it worth it to trade? I think it might be worth it to trade the uh, Stealth Drone just into one of the weaken one of their enemy drones because that thing is going to die with the marker light on it as soon as it gets attacked anyway, so... And it might also just eat the two damage, so that's fine. And then if we, if we drop this, let's, though, here he can't, yeah, he will, let's can't bodyguard that. Him. Yeah, that will that will clog up the board for us. And obviously, obviously they be... could they could just get it with the right damage, but they could have done that anyway, right? So right, yeah, exactly. Okay. And I think yeah, that's that's good for us. Yeah, okay. So okay. Yeah. Got... I mean that that's pretty that's done its job. I think. I think to have got to E5 against Omasos and be fighting this hard for board is good, isn't it? You know, it's, it's exactly where, it's where yeah. we're vulnerable okay. is these early turns. So okay. That's that's actually Marker Light's quite nice against shield because you can do the weaker attack to get rid of the shield and the Marker Light does more damage. So that wait, did he mail? Oh, he ranged attack that. That was that was some free damage we got right there. He he didn't he could have melee that with his warlord. He does have. I want a stealth suit and just heal here. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that. Oh, he's got a lot of drones. Rats. Yeah, I think we stealth suit heal uh, and then just chip away at the drones. Well, I have to do this. Yeah, that's nice. We actually want our warlord to tank all of this. Yeah, hope, mm. hopefully people are seeing this. Uh, one thing people are hopefully seeing from this is that we're not, you know, we are very much playing like a control player early on. We're not attacking base. We're not wasting all of our health needlessly until we're confident we've secured the board and turned the corner right. Okay. That's pretty nasty. Um, this is going to be painful, but I think we definitely need to play our homing beacon ability 
Um, I think we're gonna have to melee our warlord and then range that crisis into their enforcer. I think we're gonna melee then one of the drones with, yeah, range that guy into enforcer. So that thing has to go. Melee our body suit or stealth suit into one of those guys, and then I think, see, I want to say stealth drone that, but if it gets pinged from gun drone, it's gonna feel bad. But getting the stealth suit removed is gonna feel worse. So I think we definitely want to try to save this crisis. And yeah, I would place this guy next to Anva because it, 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 the event giving this guy stealth drone the turns only worth more than one HP. Oh, oh rats. For a gun drone, not a sniper drone. <laughs> it's better than a sniper drone can even hit stealth units. <laughs> exactly. Oh well, it did kind of did his job. I mean, yeah, we're still going to be glad oh. that we have. This. Oh, that's something you don't see every day. How much is that? That's 15 damage plus his board. Are we dead? We're very close. But we draw a blocker. We're not dead, but we're very close. He is sacrificing most of his board, though. Yikes. <laughs> oh, am I in a pulse? Pulse onslaught. Oh, no. Yikes. Blanking battle suits. That, you don't see that in drones every day. Okay. Um... I think we, we definitely did, we dispensation here for a um well yeah we can clear those uh we dispensation here for a blocker first nope um i guess sniper drone for free value on the board uh so now we're going to need to play that sniper drone next on, on the other side of anva heal up and shield our warlord and then clear that other drone now we're holding on by a thread, but this is not lost yet. Yeah, this is when you start slam and shield every turn on Anva. Clear that guy. Okay, so this is... This looks bad, but... There's not a lot of direct damage he can do. He has perhaps flanking battle suits, which would not be great, but we have our long strike, which we might need to emergency play that next turn. Just to just to hold on. Um, I think we're digging for uh, Grizzle Scarboy and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I got... Wait, this is where we wish we were an orc control player. <laughs> exactly. This is where you wish you had two technological supremacies to just give you six more health, even. Okay, so he's not playing anything. Okay, these... I guess he's gonna have two more drones to spam out. The thing is, we can't play on she next turn, can we? Definitely not, no. I think we are... Oh, what is he doing? Oh. Oh. Okay, that's actually fine that this is going to our shield. Not great that we're losing. He's going to play two drones? Yikes, okay. Well... Okay, that's nice. Um... For sure, I have to drop that because long strike does not clear the board and keep us alive. And then here is the could we play two drones? I think we play one drone on the other side and then buff our HP. That's keep that's giving us the most. Well, yeah. Do we want to put it on here? Well, if we buff our HP, we want to put it on the other side for sure. But okay, actually, this thing. Do we want? It's three HP and then one on Anva. So I, yeah, I think we we play one drone and then buffer HP because playing a second drone is just three HP of value, but it's three HP on a bad body. Now this is one HP on a warlord, one HP on a good body, and one on the bad body. And I I don't think we oh wait no you're right we do we trade so yeah we definitely want to take a marker drone you're right because we get our warlord power buffed. Good, good catch. So we just hope they don't have pulse onslaught or long strike. Okay. 
I can see a long strike terrain coming for sure for us. had the hard removal. Wow. That's one use for that. Okay. Very interesting that. Co coordinated engagement. Good. Oh, and he didn't pick the camo, so maybe we should have should have suspected something like that. Well, that was a that was a nice true. close game. We could have held, held on there, but he had the removal. Yeah, I suppose when you're playing against Tau, they don't pick that. That is a bit of a tell, isn't it? If, they, if they're paying attention to their deck, yeah, they probably that, that doesn't mean they're gonna have, might have something because, yeah, targeting. They would have solar eclipse, like as in unlocked because they're playing town. Yeah, interesting. If we can get a non town match <laughs> in this masterclass, Be exciting. Like, <laughs> when we said it's a town masterclass, we didn't mean like, <laughs> we didn't mean, like no other town. factions are allowed. <laughs> like, oh, here we go. Oh. Emissor. Okay, I think Tempo. this is where we want to keep the missile drone for sure. This is going to be really nice. And I think we pitched the stealth drone here. Okay, interesting. Oh, fabulous. I played with, against him before. You said no. Yeah, we don't want that. No, no. So this is huge because the missile drone is going to hit those remnants for free. And deal free damage to his warlord. They just drop the missile drone? Yeah, for sure. Definitely gonna have to hit it with his Nemesaur this turn. Um Okay, well, he's used his defense card already. this uh, we probably do want he's this guy's playing i mean nemesaur is like definitely gonna be like a tempo based kind of like aggressive necron deck i can i haven't seen a lot of nemesaur but um the only thing is that he might like play the tomb blade out and trade with it but so maybe it's better to buff its hp next turn okay let's play this now i've got yeah i'll probably get we can try to get value from this now play that yeah I don't have a lot of experience playing against Nemesaur because you don't see him. This is a we we saw a bunch of town. I was seeing some very, very rare, rare warlord. Uh. -huh. I'm almost tempted to say greater good sniper drone because otherwise that's sniper drone. It would trade with both or hmm. So that would be a, like a like a more conservative play. A greedier play would be saber protocol sniper drone. It just well then you could resurrect it and kind of free trade there, but if he's spinning a resurrection spell, but then we get free drones on broadside next turn for a really powerful turn four. That's true. That is true. And we might need the greater good later on he will, he will for more value. It. Pretty sure he'll res it. We could just save sniper drone entirely and just, I mean, to eat three damage might not be even be the worst, although then you develop more board and not res it, but. Uh, it's really powerful next turn, though. Yeah, I think. Okay, yeah, let's try that. Let's let, let's see a double savior, um, and we'll we'll stall the board because we're gonna get lots of value from our cards later on now with free drones everywhere. And they can't get a free. Ta okay, well, we're baiting out the flank. That's quite good. Gonna reanimate it. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, yes. That was a... That was a perfect draw. Uh, stealth next to Anva here, for sure, because this guy's not going to take any damage as long as he's stealthed. And then the missiles on the other side. And then I think we just save our HP. We don't want to let him read. Is, is there a world here where we actually want to stealth the missile drone? I don't. I think getting guaranteeing a long range because it, he's, I mean, he might play the Scorpec Destroyer and trade out this broadside. Now we cannot do that. And then, yeah, I don't. I think we save our HP. Uh, we don't even want to let the Doom Blade get reanimated next on this turn. Actually, this might be kind of like the game I was talking about. Uh, early on Discord where we stealth drone and then save your protocols to stealth again and then we'll be stealthed again so we'll, we'll get four turns use out of broadside potentially here without it being touched. It's a free trade. It's heal. It was essentially a heal three for us which is yeah. not bad. Exactly. For zero energy, I'll take it. <laughs> okay, that's a great threat to long range away. He is going aggro because he. Okay. Can I actually. Can I actually kill this and so we can play this now, right? Uh, almost certainly, yeah. We're playing that. Yeah, we're, we're definitely playing that on our guy. Um, this, is, this is killing this. That's killing that for sure. Um, we're definitely playing our hero power to gain one life, at least. Now, what we need to think about is do we want to play Pion to We don't want to really sacrifice a stealth drone at all here, so we're probably should, just clearing kill this that one. and then clear, yeah, clear, kill that and then clear the remnant with the stealth. And now... You want armor? We can either get armor or we can bank a storm of fire. Um, I think we might want to bank a storm of fire because at the moment we don't have a lot of resources and so we're going to need to kill them with minimal resources from our deck. And our big guy is going to be stealth. Or oh, actually, came and touch our board next turn without hard removal, anyways. So we don't need them to be more protected at the moment. I mean, this is such an insane combo, isn't it? We'll be sitting here with like two flankers. <laughs> I mean, even next turn, when they'll have Methodical Destruction open, the rod side will be stealthed again. Yeah, I see a great use of the Island Tactics next turn. Okay, this is looking fine. Um. So I think the traits here are the broadside will be killing the Praetorian. For sure, that's free. And I think we gotta play Kion Tactics um, for Anva to kill the uh, Technomancer ranged. And then we can clear the um, remnant with the stealth guy. And now what do we want to do for hero power? Um, if we get the stealth drone armor, how likely is it that it survives? It's one, two, three. Yeah, we might want to give armor now because that will make him do something to deal with the stealth drone for sure on his turn. Otherwise, it's even more value from broadside. And our broadside will have two armor now. Yeah, that's quite good. Back into stealth, you go. <laughs> Jesus. He's been in stealth for four turns now. He side the salts here to kill that. That would be excellent. Okay. I don't even think he's got it. He hasn't got it. <laughs> that was such a good armor. <laughs> Long strike. 
Oh. So, yeah, the click, long strike could be. I guess we're playing this free drone kind of regard. Although, I, I want to think how we want to place this guy. The question is, do we want to long strike this turn, or is that too. The question, like. Yeah. He doesn't. His Tomb World is much later on, and he doesn't even have that many good threats for Tomb World. And the flankers. Yeah, I feel like. I feel like we definitely want to go over the top. I don't know about a lot of good Necron comebacks for, for broadsiding and long strike. So I think we're playing this guy for sure. Um, I want to put this on here, right? On this. Oh no, I think we want to put this on the um we want to put that on the flayed one so the stealth drunk can kill the flayed one. Our hero can kill that guy with the two marker light already. We'll self, uh, let's have a self run trade with a zero, and then we'll think if we want to kill remnants or a go face. I'm actually, yeah, I, okay. I think we trade our hero into the, the that guy, or we can clear it with that and then have a free clear remnant. Gotta get rid of this leech guy. Okay, yeah, take that and then play the missile drone out to the side of the long strike. Oh, clear the remnant. Oh. Oof. Okay. Just... Yeah, that's probably pretty good. Okay, stealth drone die. You shame we couldn't get one heal on there because the armor would have, um, the armor would have uh, value from the armor again. But you yeah, can't, but long, you can't I think long strike was. I I like if I'm Necrons, I have energy in an empty board. I don't see a whole lot. Can, okay, so that's four energy. Yeah, okay, that's both of his four effects. He's sitting on these all game, isn't he? So our long strike was a three for one value there, four for one even if you count the marker light. Oh, look at this, guys! Look at this. We have twenty-two damage, so we can. Yeah, I guess we can play more for board here. Um, free drones, of course. Yeah, we'll put them next there because we'll just increase that damage. And then it plays around um, the hard removal with the three. So what I would do here is attack with both these guys first, and then play place the drones. Well, act, we also want to buff the HP of the suit and the missile drone, so I would play that hero power right now, yeah, and then attack. And I would save the missile drone. I don't think we need to attack with that. We, I think we want to save that in case it's side salt, so it survives. And we can attack with Anva, and then play the vanguards around the uh, enforcer. Oh, you do want them around the info. Yeah, because because kind of like with like a Makari, right? If if the cheap guys die, we get double value out of the attack buff. I just take the storm farm. Yeah, sure. And he'll be quite dead next turn unless he does something incredible. Ah, he's dead. And there we have it. Yeah, nice. So if I'm a pretty pretty contentious early game there with a lot of Necron reanimation value, we we ended up to survive yeah. through that with with six turns of stealth broadside. Yeah, he kind of aggroed us down a bit early, didn't he? Came back. That was a good one. Turn around. We haven't had chaos. We haven't Eldar. We haven't had orcs yet, have we? Let's get one. Or Tyranids. Tyranids? Do they still exist? <laughs> I've seen. I've seen a few swarm lords actually is still going down the the aggro plan, but I'm, I'm surprised Neurothrope isn't more pop. Maybe I haven't played much around with Tyranids at all, but yeah, I would think that Neurothrope would be as a cheap ping warlord and still having synapse synergy. Oh gosh, um, not about you, but I really like that hand against Zelda. Missile drone is excellent here. Sniper drone is pretty good, but can be fragile. Well, we're. Oh, Actually, yes. that would be an off-tempo play for them. It would be an off-tempo play for them to remove it with the... So, Sniper I think is... we can actually... Hit... Oh, I think we can keep this. Fuselaw is alright. I think we can keep this. Because the Eldar is, can be one of the other factions where like they have a board of two HP guys that Fuselaw just clears real nicely. Yeah, we might want to use the, dr the drone part and sniper drone turn. Just to give it a chance. I think for sure. Oh, that's that's actually that's a that's a great point. We're on the defense, so we get extra HP on that guy essentially. Yeah. Same with the Necron game. This missile drone is going to give us pretty good value 
for free damage on soulstone clears. Or do we drop the drone part now? Protect this. Um, kind of a similar thing, I think, actually. I mean, what if he plays either of the flankers? Then he can't even clear the missile drone, so that could be good. It's less, it's more protection for a missile, less protection for a sniper drone. Um, and if he plays like a striking scorpion, it's just gonna die to his hero. So I think we save it for now. It's not guaranteed that they'll play a flanker to remove this. And honestly, we, I, I would rather bait a flanker out with the missile drone than the sniper drone later on. Actually, missile drone's quite good against striking scorpion too, because it's gonna hit it through stealth. Might be one of the things he's thinking about. Well, pretty confident he doesn't have this. Oh, there it. Okay. So now we snipe a okay. drone and sidewall. What was in connection again? Uh, one second, your stream's coming back for me. Yeah, just. Uh, just... Yeah, okay. Our missile drone's at one HP. Um. Question is, do we want to hit with our? Do we want to chip away the two health or leave it up? I think it'd be good to put this guy down. Yeah, we probably do want to trade that into it so we don't get Shuriken next turn. And then Tidewall Sniper Drone. I mean, if we save your... It's not a bad turn to save your... Because that, that Striking Scorpion doesn't do four damage to us at worst. Which isn't... That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking maybe we save you here. Because if you see uh, enough flankers... And can't then play. our next turn is more powerful. We don't. We that also we don't give him a good target for like Howling Banshee because I'm thinking he wants to play Howling Banshee next turn. If we don't have a board for him to play that for good value, he might not play it. So yeah, I think we can just play Saber here and, and eat the Scorpion hit. Especially because we, have... we are sitting on this combat combo here as well. Like if we... good point. If he wants to try and like get, <clears throat> you know tempo out here. We can. Okay, so. And okay, well, this Head is off. quite good now, yeah. Do we want a drone, Paul? Yeah, I think we do. It's gonna, it's gonna, it, it gums up the board. Uh, yeah, Piranha, and then we play one drone on the side of Piranha and one drone on the side of the Guardian, but that's gonna die next turn for sure anyways. Now, it can be questionable whether or not you want to hit face Eldar here, because essentially every time they get to attack, they're getting double value from their Warlord. And we kind of deny a little bit of that if we chip away at their health with ours. But we don't have a huge life lead. In fact, we're, we're, we're below his life at the moment. And Eldar, of course, have some pretty actually terrifying closing damage, oh. so... Oh, maybe our drone will save us four damage. Pretty bad blowout. I do wonder if we just. Oh, okay. He's going very aggressive. Um. Do we just play out the. The like since he just did. He burned his soul stones and his wailing. Or his, uh. Aldrich Storm. I think perhaps Pathfinder, both the drones, and heal up a little bit. It just present another wide board for him to... Uh, okay, play one next uh, next to that 1 HP guy, yeah. So we don't want that 1 HP guy to get a buffed health. Oh, yeah, so I should have put, should have put drones either side. I? It's, uh, he has the extra damage from the Shuriken already, so the HP is actually a little less consequential. But yeah, I think this is fine. 
Oh, tells me. I think he's. I think he's got whaling deer in hand. Mhm. Mm I think he's. Oh, I, yeah. think that, I think that that last turn tells me that. But the problem he's got now is we're also threatening lethal back. You know, very close, really. Right. Well, you have it's it, it's ten damage from storm of fire, 17. and then yeah, seventeen. Another damage, ten from 19. marker 19. light. He's gonna click. Oh. Wait, is he gonna? Oh. Yeah, he's got. He's he didn't. Got, he didn't. Well, unless both our marker lights miss. But he's definitely got whaling. That's for sure. Oh, wait, oh, we have to recount now. Crap. Did we miss that now? That's seven plus seven. Oh, we only have seventeen damage. It's not in the marker lights hit. Yeah, we got seventeen. Oh, wait a minute. But then you slain for. Oh, that, we can't play both of those. Ah, no, we can't do it. Okay, so we got to take this out. We don't have a. We're gonna have to put a shield on him. Aren't Can we, we even sir? Oh wait, we don't have. He doesn't have whaling doom next turn because it's, it's it will be only seventy. So oh, we yeah. don't have to put the shield on him yet because he doesn't have whaling doom next turn. So actually, I think we need to th threaten a board to kill him the yeah. following turn yeah. and take out this threat. So send in the one HP gun drone for sure, and send in the pathfinder onto that guy. And then I think we. We're. Oh, we no, no, just play it. I, actually, it might be a little better. We have a path, pathfinder attack the the um the ship, and then best bid at melee attack. We gotta go fast too. So you want to do what? Best bid? Yeah, best bid. Okay. Attack melee, and then pathfinder. Pathfinder range. Play sniper drone, and then heal up. Play sniper drone next to the onba, and then heal up. Okay, so I, I can't imagine he has six burn. Oh, he could have double howling. How, double Banshee Mask would actually be incredible, but hopefully he doesn't have that. But if he does stun us with Mask, we've still got a bit of it. Six, seven, eight. Be 19 even without the Lord. Okay. Good. So that means he's probably going to spend some flankers now to him. Oh no! Wait! It's no it's stones. Stones. Though. Not going to do too much. Banshee mass. Got it then, aren't we? Let's see. Oh, he might clear the sniper drone. For free. Play. Okay, we could get double Markelite hit on his Warlord, though. That's 12. Oh, we're one damage off. That is so unfortunate. So we have 6 plus 8, 14 plus 4, 18. Damage off. We can't kill him. Uh... Could shield, the shield use... doesn't help. I don't even think shield helps, does it? Shield won't help because you can just hero power it away. So we've got a fuselade. I guess we have a fuselade and hope he doesn't have Whirling Doom, yeah. And I guess just like. Maybe we still Bank of Storm shield. of Fire. Okay, we can try a shield, yeah. That might help from other lethal. That's unfortunate. Our marker drones really missed the mark there. Both times. We've gotten one more marker light on him. Oh, maybe shield was wrong. Maybe that's like playing to loot. Maybe we should have just gone Storm of Fire. Then would have been threatening double storm of fire with a mark light. He would have. Got us anyway with Wailing Doom. That question is. 
Doesn't have whaling down. Maybe we should have gone to stop my fire. Then. Oh, we have a blocker. That's good. Um, so we're playing that out for sure. Uh, I guess we clear the guardian with our hero, kill the soul stone, and play missile drone and reshield up. Now, even if he, I think it'll be harder to. Or do we want armor on that? Okay, we're definitely using the hero power. Although, uh, do we want to missile drone on? I'm oh. thinking we might not want missile drone because I'm thinking how does armor save that guy more? If we put armor on the on the crisis. Like, you know, even how you would even you would need howling. Okay, yeah, I think we can oh, play the missile drone. Yeah, yeah, we can play the missile drone and then shield our guy. Our our warlord. I think that should be safe enough. Although if we done it again, should we have gone st <laughs> should we have gone stall the fire and did Well now we have a wider board. But for double stall and he's got one marker light. So I think playing protective here is, is the correct move, especially now since we do have a Vanguard unit, so we can we're protecting both against direct damage and attacks from the board. He's used both his Eldritch Storms already. He's used both his Crimson Hunters. Okay, there's one flanker. Now we can take that out for two damage, yeah. Probably kills them, sort of. Gosh, Marker Drone couldn't mark his Warlord again. Got to carry on tactics here, haven't we? We're not surviving uh, uh, his hero and Scorpion Exarch, though. Uh, I, think that, I think we're done there. Yeah. He might attack incorrectly into the shield, but we can try to play for that, I suppose. But yeah, I think we need a Kion, clear both of his things. Um, I guess what we get, I guess play Piranha, free drones, and then shield up. Hopefully he incorrectly attacks into the shield. Yeah, that, that okay. Yeah, the way Shuriken works, it's just got to attack with his lord first, doesn't he? That's all he's got to do. Oh, it's GG. It's close ending. I think Galen's pretty good, you know. Galen's pretty good in uh, I think Eldar are good against town. People. I mean, Elder World, that was, that was where I climbed a whole lot uh, two seasons ago with, was, was Galen, and I mean, Eldar are good, they got, they got they got markedly worse though when the armor orcs came out, but orc control is pulling back a little bit, the armor card's still there of course, but 
They're, I mean, yeah, they're quite good against Tau. They got the flankers, they have stealth threats. Um, I mean, yeah, as we see, Dance of Death is pretty, it was, it was pretty bad when he played that, and we didn't have a board. I mean, we played our Saber Protocols a turn before, we've gotten some value out of that for sure this game, but maybe not as much as he's gotten out of Dance of Death. Oh, he didn't count right. He's giving us another turn. Is he giving us lethal? There's no way. Oh, okay. He, we, we won this game. So maybe he just doesn't... Well, we didn't really. What? <laughs> I'm not counting this as a win. But maybe he, okay. just, he just didn't really... I think he probably just didn't understand how this interaction worked. Which is a thing, you know? It is a thing to play for. He, well, he did it er He did it earlier on against the Crisis Bodyguard. He attacked it into the shield with his shirk and... Um, bike attack biker thing I mean this is when I say that yeah some some players are starting to count storm of fire a lot don't but even fewer like will count double storm of fire wow well, he probably just I don't know I don't know he probably just didn't account for the fact that the shuriken Clear, the the shield shield first, go through. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing for time, Barry? Uh I'm I don't got much going on too You're soon, right. so you yeah. alright to go again? You let me know when, sure. you, when you when you good to try and get um see some chaos or orcs. Yeah, something. it'd be good to see a chaos or an orc match, wouldn't it, I think. Although I'm, I'm I I do I do like that we gotta see how it works against Eldar and even Necrons. Like it's, it's nice to see Necrons on the ladder. Yeah. I I'm That's really true, hoping yeah. Yeah, we've had, we've they had, get had El Mesos Alvar. Necrons and Eldar. So yeah, we just Chaos or Orcs would be good. I think Necrons would be an excellent uh, uh, adversary for Tau on the ladder if they like undo or even like undo and buff the uh, X Mark Destroyer, so that it maybe is even like cheaper or more efficient to, to board clear with the ping because I feel like that's a really good way to get rid of the shields and the drones and. That was such an interesting and cool control deck before. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know why I oh, did that for Hex. Oh, Space Marines. Kalgar. Kalgar. Excellent. Well, we're getting rid of him, aren't we? Yeah, we're getting rid of Devilfish, I think, too. Um, I think we can pitch a Sniper Drone, too. Uh, let's see. Does he... Well, they... Let's see. Actually, we're going second, so... His turn four, he doesn't really want to play the Inceptor. Actually, maybe we keep Sniper Drone. Because it's fine to play later on, and he's not going to be able to easily clear it with his Blinker and Flyer. Oh, I'll only do a second one. Maybe he could have back, but... Like you want to play two on turn three with the... Uh, yeah, that's true. With reduced cost. That would be probably pretty hard to deal with. And protected by the uh, support turret. Yeah, I'm not even uh, Space Marines. This is my. This is actually the first deck I I got when I started playing Warp Forge. But um, Ooh, oh my, nice that's combo there, man. quite good. I don't even know what the Space Marine game plan even is anymore though, because they're not playing cards that outvalue anyone else. Tough one for them. They got. I guess they have the burn is still kind of kind of scary. They draw through their deck so they can find it consistently. Just save you into Piranha here, right? Right, yeah. They're not doing anything on the board. They played a Stern Guard. I actually have possibly the same thing. That's that's about the best we can hope for. Do we, do we play the Tide Ball when we play the Piranha, or do we save that for when we drop the Snipe Drones, I think? Um, what is he doing? Two damage, okay. Um... What are the five energy flankers? I guess we would think consider that. Is there any? What is he doing at five energy? Uh, I guess even quick. I think we do play it because like if he uh, storm ravens or quick shots it, it's gonna die. But if we play this, then he can't. Um, he can't. I don't think he can easily clear our piranha. So you want to play it now? Yeah. Yeah. I think we play that now. Yeah. I'll use two cards to clear that. 
We're gonna still have all of our gun drones, which will probably... Okay. I guess Primaris Reaver is a very good Guardian Drone Destroyer. But I feel like his reports that get pinged away. Oh, we didn't get one. This looks to me like we just clear this with our Lord. For sure, we yeah. Be a bit mindful of our health against these guys. But I guess now we've got two options. We could either Stealth Battle Suit and heal. Or we could drop two sniper drones either side of this one and heal. <laughs> That's pretty threatening, isn't it? Yeah, I like the sniper drone plan. Especially he doesn't now even that... clear it with Storm Raven, so. so. We've just seen a lot of flankers from him. What does he do to that? Uh, best he clears one in melee with the uh, with his flying guy, the Inceptor Sergeant. That could be a pretty good answer, but okay, he's gonna play that. He still has to take four to clear long range on the other guy, though. Oh, he's not gonna do it. That's not, not a, not a yeah, great idea. Guy, now we get free damage. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, get out of here. This is quite a nice turn. Now we've got a couple of options. We could actually just, just we use protocols, don't we, so we get free drones. From oh, them. free drones is nice, yeah. I think that that's probably the strongest option. We already have damage on board, so we don't need to put more on with stealth. Protects the long range um, as well, doesn't it? Protect the long range from his second Inceptor Sergeant. The, the only other option would be you go stealth battle suit, missile drone, then you can heal. Both one. That's pretty good as I, well. I think the Enforcer is a little nicer at, at the moment. Um, it's a bigger body. It's going to stop any more flankers. And it's going to put more HP on the board for us. Yeah, I think we can attack here. We're, we're, we definitely have the board, so we can just start pressuring him. Let me put this on the other side. Oh, should that have gone there? Oh, actually, you're... you're he doesn't... We don't guarantee... We actually, so we don't want to trade that away. And now the Enforce... This is actually something I'm still working with, is... the Okay, well, that's going to be a quick win. <laughs> the placement on the Guardian drones. Um, sometimes you want... You do you do want to keep the Enforcer next down boss so we can keep getting his health buff. Other times, you need the Guardian Drones getting the health. So it's it's always a little micro choice there. Yeah. Situation I, dependent. I, I know what you mean. I'm I'm still very much like, I'm very much like on on the edge. I'm like, mm, do I? Which which way do you? I to be honest, I've started to put, I've started to flank the Enforcer. I've I've started to do that rather than the Lord. So obviously, attack with the Lord and get the three damage, and then put the Guardian Drone down. Mm-hmm. Ooh, we got, we got a combo. Probably get rid of... Dude, our bodyguard's really good against town. Bodyguard is good, but I... I'm, I'm playing it on four. This is a good hand, but it's also we're going second, so he's got a chance to run away with the game before we've even gotten to play something. I can see us pitching that in the fuselade to look for an early gameplay. Uh, this is good. This is very good. Our, as long as he doesn't do a support drone, we can stealth our uh, piranha. I would say it drones are actually, especially drones on the play, are probably maybe Anva's only unfavorable matchup, I would say. Runs on the play are pretty tough. This is awkward as well because there's the stealth drone play. We yeah, we definitely do not want to use that. We need to save that for free with Piranha. I think we just attack and heal and pass. I guess we save your profiles here too. It would be nice to have something play proactively against his probably piranha turn next, but we're gonna have our own with the stealth drone as well and a and a turret. Or we might even save the support turret for after the stealth drone on stealths. Okay, yeah. That's gonna be a little ugly. Oh, he's yeah, this is what I was talking about. 
when you're playing the mirror match against Tau, they might have the exact same thing you do, but the turn earlier. That fuselage. Well, I mean... I think we just have to play out uh, our going, thing. Actually, with... this, wait a minute, this is pretty good, right? Because stealth into... Stealth second is good against stealth, isn't it? Right, yeah. The only thing is his gun drones might ping off ours, but I think we can make a board wide enough. I think we also want to play our guardian drone as well this turn. Oh god, wait a minute. Why well, I should have done that first, right? That it goes on that side. Is that right? You can play it right now. That's, that's gonna that's gonna go on the fines. It's gonna die. It's just gonna hopefully really just tank those uh, gun drone shots away. Oh. It's our opponent this time who's looking to reconnect. I feel like this this, this game needs to improve its reconnection code and yeah. logic because only getting 30 seconds and not even being able to restart the game to like fix it is really bad. Like with Hearthstone, you got like a whole you got, you got it's your turn timer and you could restart the game and try to log yeah. back in. With Hearthstone, you would immediately exit the game, log back in, and then you. Oh, oh, well, there goes a fun, potential glee game. I mean, rats. It, would his, what would his Went into the warp. Attack? I think we were pretty safe against the gun drones there, to be honest with that board. I mean, if the gun drone hits, like, our fate, or the guardian in our face, and then he can clear, he can clear all of our gun drones himself, but we can clear the piranha easily next turn. It just depends on what he played, really. It would still come down to what he had to play and what we had to play. Although we had an enforcer battle suit for free drones, which is always quite good. That's the other thing, is that Saber Protocol's early game is so much better because you're really trying to look for play that enforcer battle suit at maximum value on curve. Okay, um, well we got our Mesos, so I guess we get rid of this and this. one piranha for sure. Get rid of the second. I could even say get rid of the second one because um, we don't have anything else to combo with and we want uh, well, something like a best bit is excellent now to kill his turn one drone and camouflage to take. Eat Mecca, I think I played against him as well. Not much going on here. So the scary thing here is that he has the support, the extra drone. Um, might make it difficult to clear, but I feel like they don't often play that turn one. No one's expecting the Stingwing. Oh, that's a very nice play for the next turn. It'll be interesting if this guy's playing a dynamic offensive as well, though. I think that's actually the next thing I have to try is Omisos battle suits, because the ability to have drones as a tool, but not have to play them in your deck, so you just get more dynamic offensive value seems seems pretty good. And just being able to make the blocker. The point is, I think it's the one drone build I've not tried yet. I think we just drop stealth suit here. For sure, yeah, because he's got the saber protocols. Um, and I think we yeah, pass here. I mean, right now our board plus our flinker next turn is going to clear a, save, a normal saber protocols. Uh, into Piranha. No, he's got the stealth as well. That would be a, a good reason to play Fusilod, in fact. Get rid of That's why I see some people not running Fusilod, and it's, I mean, it's, it's it's just, I mean, it's better Storm Raven in every ultimate deck on Storm Raven, but it's also so good against these stealth drones. Yeah. You might think paying four energy to get rid of a two energy card is bad, but it, when it's the best two energy card in the game, perhaps it's, it becomes a lot, a lot more, a lot more worth it. Sure. All right, we almost clear this, which is fine. We can leave the Pathfinder alive. Oh wait, did I do that wrong? No, I think we. I think we uh, do want to. We probably hit the Pathfinder to force a trade, so it doesn't hold onto it and protect it behind a bunch of stuff. It's not terrible. And then yeah, we kill that. That's fine. So currently we're quite ahead. Feel. Okay, he's investing in a second saber protocol, so 
Look too soon. That signals to me that we have to really push for the board now before he can, so we can always have enough of a board to respond to his drone spam turns. And he's gonna hard trade for that guy. But that, we have played one saver protocol, oh, so I think now's a got the cup up when he does go wide. I think yeah, I think maybe we play devil fish um, for double. Yeah, um, I like the devil, I like the fish here as well. Yeah, devil fish and heal, and that way we have double missile drone flank next turn. I also, want to go face here. Um. Actually, I think we can do that because we have a good life lead. We have board control. He has long-term value in his double saver protocol, so we are advantaged for finishing the game sooner. Yeah, we're definitely Especially if he's going about to drop experimental drones. We're definitely the beat down in this position, for sure. Okay. Not there. Then. Stealth or blocker. Okay. 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 Well, this okay. is looking like an AOE turn to me, doesn't it? Well, I'm, I think, I wonder if missile, how well missile drone clears that. One, two, no, that doesn't. Four, five. I don't think though. Flanking missile drones are doing, are getting clear. We're only getting one anyway, aren't we? Yeah, we, I, we, have save, we, we play one saviors, right? I don't think we have in this game. Oh, we haven't. No, it's still here. Oh, we played a Stingwing, that's right. Okay, um, yeah, I think we AoE here for sure. It's gonna nicely take care of those three HP guys, and now we can melee trade uh, the Devilfish and then rain. Oh, wait, oh, that's two HP. Yeah, so we can melee trade all, or, all these things. No, we melee all of them. Uh, oh, because the three. So that's oh, yeah. gonna clear one, oh, and yeah. then a two, the two damage. That's quite. Yeah, that was a pretty good response. Okay, yeah, next turn I'm thinking we might want to like crisis bodyguard and savior protocols because I do want to get. Well, again, yeah. Although. Well, wow. I, I want to get the um, I want to get the full value from broadside in a later turn because I feel like he's dragging this on with his. These drones. Although here we can, he's gonna, the two gun drones are gonna survive. Interesting. That. Okay. Oh, Pathfinder's quite good here. Okay, we could. We could Crisis and Savior for a later value, or we could just Pathfinder and clear the board now, which I think I like that a little better. What are we hitting with the Pathfinder? We'll have uh, probably one of the um, probably one of the gun drones, because then uh, the the marker drone we play that gets flanked will be able to take it off. We want to do this then. Yeah, if we want to conserve that health. We can clear with that, yeah. Trade that there for sure, yeah. Play one marker drone where the bodyguard or the spouse it used to be, so it gets the HP buff. Do we want to save here and then do it? Oh yes, actually, that that's gonna about net us the same because we're not gonna have leftover energy for banking a card. I think we put both actually. Yeah, we have both on that side, and then clear. Quite nice. Something like that. And I think, unless he does something amazing this turn, we're probably threatening lethal. Probably should have traded with. Oh no. Yeah, he's infantry, isn't he? Yeah, we probably should have traded with him actually and kept this on three. That yeah. could have been a that, that, that could have been a little, a little more value, yeah. Never mind. Keeping the pressure on him. And we've also got our own saving protocols off now, so it's not, we're not as far behind. No, I think we're in a really good spot. He he would need a really incredible value sacrifice or something. To, this is uh, absolutely looking insane as well, right? This is. That's why I'm glad I added the one up. And definitely. What did you drop for it again? Uh. Oh, the DSA. Uh, 
the DS8. It's tough because that's also very good in this matchup. But when, when Devilfish goes off, it just feels unbelievably good. Like next mm. turn with this, it's going to be. It's gonna, this is this is going to be ridiculous, right? Choose to do that. Oh, oh! Man, there's so many options here. What do you think? Okay. Five, um, six, seven. We could play the stealth we'll... and heal. Okay, I think right now we need to trade melee on Va into the into the blocker and the marker drone into the blocker right now. Um, play the broadside next to the um, on the uh, by the devilfish. I think because I think that it has enough HP now on the next to on Va. Yeah, between there. Uh, these are going to cost one. Okay, I think we want to play one missile drone, not two. Give shield to the devilfish. Have it trade in their broadside. And then the drone the missile drone can go in the middle to clear them up, and then whatever else we have to clean up. Shield to the devilfish and it's an attack what? The bro uh the broadside. And then send the missile drone at the missile drone in the middle, yeah. And that's gonna leave them one missile drone because that marker did not go in the right one, but that's fine. It's pretty, pretty good board at the moment for one missile drone not to make too much of an impact. I saw that as a full clear there, but the marker light was not on the center missile drone, unfortunately. Look at this, we have more HP than we started with, and we're at turn 9. <laughs> we might fight on this guy though, it's not... Might wanna... Buy a shield drone. Health drone. This is nice. Oh, this now. is fantastic. Yeah. So we're definitely playing that on the other side of Anva. Um... I think this already I can see that. that Great, yeah, for sure. Um, this is that like... can melee trade, I guess. Yeah. Um, we can get a gun drone and Anva can trade in the last guy, I suppose. Where do we want the stealth drone? Then? Uh, I don't even think we need to play stealth drone. I think we just play the bodyguard. Save the stealth drone for later. I think we play the bodyguard. Um. Where the path find, where the, I mean, where the uh, piranha is right now. And then Buffett's health. Sorry, what am I doing? Uh, play the crisis next to Anba where the piranha is, and then just buff their health. I think that's better than playing the stealth turnout, because that guy's going to protect our wide board. Um, I stick and... next to the drone. Like, no, I think we can save it, because like, our board is very threatening. And I, 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 right now, because we have one, like his only hope is like a long strike. It's, I don't even know if that saves him here, but to counter that, we have our stealth long strike. <laughs> okay, we gotta go. We gotta go quick. Oh. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're good here. That's another reason for playing stealth drone. I guess is that it would have been another body for um, storm of fire. I guess that is true, but. I don't see him playing any any vanguard bodies at the moment. Yeah, we're all good. Well, this might be the only time I've seen a faction other than orcs in the game with more HP than they started with. Yeah, that is so weird. He's so weird. Even after attacking as well, we end up on 36 health. That is crazy. That is crazy. Oh, come on, right? We need Chaos or Ox. We need Chaos or Ox. Well, at least we redeemed ourselves against the drones matchup there. 
Oh no. Oh. The mirror map on the draw. I mean, it's not bad. What well, we keep that hand? I can see pitching Piranha. We kind of want stealth battles too. We don't have saber protocols. But with the Guardian Drone, that gives us a couple of options with missile and sniper drone. We did long strike as well. We... Mm. Oh, I think we keep it. It's kind of like our one comeback card. It's not a great, great draw. Hmm. Oh, lots of blockers there. Um... I think we play Missile Drone here. Yeah. Pressure the board. Um, next turn, we're definitely playing Sniper Drone and Drone Port, and that will save our Missile Drone at 1 HP. Doesn't have Pathfinder or Stingwing. Oh, I actually have, does have Stingwing, it's my bad. Still doesn't get through the Drone Port, though. Hmm. Well. I feel like we lose it to trade it, we just play our Stingwings. The question is though, how much of Sniper Drone do we lose if he has a good response? We need... At the moment he cannot clear, he can't touch Sniper Drone, but if he has like a Pathfinder or another Stingwings or whatever, then it... I think we're fine playing Drone Point sni at Sniper Drone. The Stingwings is not going to win if we're behind. Do we want to attack as well, thinking about if he heals? We definitely, yeah, we definitely want to attack as well. We need to get that thing off the board, otherwise it's gonna... Yeah, that's a very good card. And we have our own, but we'll use it. It's gonna do something more valuable. Yeah, I mean, the dream here is that he can only attack the Vanguard, right? And then we can drop Vespid and heal both, and Right. We should be in the okay position. But then again, he might have a... Oh, okay. Okay, he's going for some tempo plays later on. This is very good, though. Yeah, so that sniper drone's going to clear that for absolutely free. And then I guess we probably want our sting wings out, yeah. So we draw something next turn, you'd rather play that than our flanker to deal with their board. I mean, he's gonna have a flanker. Probably, I mean, a broadside is probably, it would be like the worst case, but... Enforcer, he won't be able to play. Stealth suit could trade favorably into the Sting Wings, but, and it would have stealth actually, so our sniper don't kind of deal anything with it either. Yeah, stealth suit and broadside are about the best ones they can, they can draw off of dynamic offensive, I feel this early in the game. If you can't damage this board, is it worth us putting armor on this board next turn? If we have nothing else to play, for sure, yeah. That's what I would do. I would definitely save a, whatever card we draw for, for an armored board on this. I mean, saying that, if then, if the Enforcer is what he's drawn as the flanker, wouldn't actually make a difference to the next turn, would it? Putting the armor on. Not for one of the guys, but it helped the other one that it survives. It's true. I'm, I'm imagining that he's at least going to attack the sniper drone here just to get rid of the long range. But then, That's what players should do, yeah. It's a lot of damage. Get rid of that long range. range. Sniper drone can be so good like that. It, I mean, yeah, that's why Sniper Drone is good, is because it actually threatens damage to trade with it as opposed to like that the, the sniper unit from Ultramarines. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so and, yeah, in, the, in the worst case that it gets traded away, the, the four or eight damage it will deal is yeah is good. But as a as how you're, I, I'm always sacrificing my world's HP early game for board control, especially in the mirror match. Oh, what is he doing over it though? That's really the 
a question to consider. Disconnected as it is. This is a very. This feels like a very long. Well, disconnect would show us that lovely pop-up, I would imagine. Well, there is a no, no, there is a scenario where it does just linger on this screen. It says enemy turn. Oh. It goes on for a long time. You have to wait it out, and then eventually you get you get the win. So I've made that mistake where I've just thought, oh, maybe it's me, and I've just come out of the game, and then I, you lose the points, but. Actually, do have to just wait it out. And the grim darkness of the future is only patience. I feel like he's got a long time here. Time on. Oh. Yeah, this, 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 I can not believe this is a disconnect now. unfortunate i think victor's on the top of the ladder too i just like that i mean i've had i've had my fair share of very frustrated this next but then again it, it happens on the flip side enough that i feel like it's it's even points yeah. wise but yeah. obviously it's a, it's a frustrating game experience nonetheless yeah it's often <laughs> when it happens what frustrates you isn't it well we haven't had we haven't managed to get a chaos or an orcs match which is a little bit of a shame, because we talked a lot about that in the early... Um, right. In the start. Yeah, your opponent's left again, yeah. there you go. It, it does take a long time to come through. Should we leave it there, or do we, should we go for one more? We can try one more if you're up for it. I feel like it's oh, kind of late there for you, but... Yeah, leave, you it, leaving it on a disconnect feels a bit... Feels a bit wrong. Oh, we got an ox. Gordrang as well, no less. Oh. Pretty tough. Um, what do we want? Yeah, we'll probably toss the tactics and fusillade. Uh, I keep Pathfinder on the... Well, is he? he's not really doing anything. He's just hitting us with his power. This is a bit vulnerable to Scorch Assault. Yeah, that's still a very good. Okay, that's good. Saber protocols. And uh, oh, the missile gun's pretty nice here. It's gonna save us some early damage. Or a lot of times, Gordrain just hits your. F I've had this multiple. I think Gordrain just hero powers and hits your face anyway. Even if you have the missile drone out, so that can be nice. Yeah, this is a tough match. Uh, here, we, we definitely do want to conserve our HP in this matchup. Okay, definitely missile drone now. We got one to spare. I think we might want a tide wall here as well. Um, uh, we don't need to because he can't clear the missile drone this turn because he, he only gets the melee buff. Uh, and if he's hero powered, it will clear the tide wall in one turn. And I don't know what they do on three energy. I'm not sure whether we save it next turn, you know, because. We're gonna be looking for stealth on four anyway, aren't we? Yeah. There is a world where if he if he doesn't hit our missile drone, there's a world where we play another missile drone and heal them both. That's actually double missile drone with increasing HP is a pretty good. Okay, yeah, yeah. They don't I'm attack the missile we, drone. I think we miss our drone, tide wall, and heal here. Or do we just? Or do we want to risk this? I think we we save the tide wall. That's gonna be pretty good at tempo play later in the game to at least cost him to use his hero power to clear it. I think we just missile drone and heal here. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna scorch us all. If they both hit four, oh, a tide wall might protect us from. I guess it. I guess in that case, the tide wall could protect from scorch assault if we play both of them. 
We don't want the Tidewall to be inside, though, because it's going to die to 3 or 4 damage from his hero power. What do you think, then? Do we use it here or save it? I think we save Tidewall. I would play Missile Drone and buff the health of everything, though. That's fine. If we use a Scorcher Assault, that means he's not going to use it on our Stealth Battle Suit, at least. So that's good. Are we, are we not attacking, or...? Not attack, yeah. We save, we, we're saving our the HP on our side of the board. That's a very risky Scorch Assault. I think that would be a really bad play for him. But his hero power is not looking great either. So yeah, he just has to walk on. Well, we can, we can actually heal and save that, can't we? Yeah, the question is, do we want to play Saber Hood or Stink? Stinglings could save us 4 damage in attacking the Orc Knob. And I don't know if it's saving us much more in sticking around later in the game. So maybe we do that. Yeah, I can see that. We play Stinglings. Heal. Buff the HP and then trade the Missile Drone into Go Godrin. Or we could take the 4 damage with our Warlord. I don't know, against Orcs, I think we might regret that later. Yeah, I think we can trade in, and I think we play the Tidewall this turn to protect both these one-hit guys. I think that's what we do. Yeah, this might be where the Scorch Assault comes in. Scorch Assault's pretty good here. Okay. It's, it's okay. Is this a Pathfinder okay, turn? I think this is a Pathfinder turn. Pathfinder, one marker drone, play them on opposite sides of Anva because the Stingwing is going to get sacrificed. Yeah. The Stingwing has done his duty for the greater good. Mm -hmm. Anva in the melee, and that now we that's a pretty good board, and it's going to, once again, these guys are, these little guys are going to distract him from hitting our face. Please be three, or two, I'll take it. Yeah. Happy to see him fall so well. Hmm. That's the scariest unit they have against Tau. <laughs> I hate that thing, man. Well, I mean, I love it, but... Only because I'm usually not. Oh, okay, we can actually clear... I can... This might be where we take four damage. I yeah. think we battle suit, heal, and then yeah. clear that. Take this is this is why I think not taking it earlier was important, right? Mm -hmm. And next turn we get to use both about stealth suit's ability and put a shield on one of them for for good trade. That's it's really nice one. Uh, stealth suit on turn uh, six e to seven e get a lot of value. Oh. Wow. Against that. that actually is fine. Oh. That's that's absolutely fine because it's got we have enough firepower to bust through. We're gonna sacrifice this. Uh... Well, actually, hmm. we could keep. We could either keep. We could keep the crisis battle suit alive at five HP and stealth suit at one HP and kill it, or we could sacrifice the crisis and keep stealth suit at six. Um. I think Stealth Suit at 6 still dies to all their flankers, so honestly, I'm, I'm inclined to say make the homing beacon for sure. We definitely need that. And hero power for shield. And I think we put the shield on the bodyguard. I'm mean, not the bodyguard, the battle suit. The stealth, or the, not the stealth, the, the flying guy. Because this guy will survive with 1 HP. Stealth on the flyer. And yeah. Now we'll have two, because I think he can kill the stealth suit with a flanker anyways. But if he's going to oh. use buggy, this does more damage to the buggy. Because he's already used that a veteran true. storm boy. Okay, if he doesn't have second veteran storm boy, maybe it is better on the stealth suit, I think. Because he can't clear it with his warlord. Okay, I will do this. Oh, oh we got to swing it with our hero too. Maybe we, no, um, maybe we messed that up. Oh, I don't think we shield on Va there. 
takes a lot. And of if we play Kai on tactics, then we lose damage on both of our guys. We can't afford the shield and the, the Kai on, and we have to clear it because we we play something, he's just gonna make it. He, we have to clear it. If it doesn't die, then it gets two more HP behind armor too. He's using it, and we have the enforcer to save our HP later on. That's fine. This is a good enforcer turn. Well, mm, we yeah, I think we have to get a body. We don't have another like, body. And I think we play that guy on this side and then buff the HP of the enforcer to seven. Because I think seven is important. Oh, to get outside of squig buggy and storm, that storm boy range. So yeah, sorry, I should have pulled out of there, shouldn't I? Although, mind you... No, no, I, yeah, it doesn't matter, because he's no. going to clear it with four is the same as three. And now we have a little more attack if he doesn't, if he leaves it. We would like to draw another big threat from our deck. Okay, well, that's not great. Let's see Makari out. Okay, there's one no mucking. Okay, there's a threat. Um, it's such a shame we didn't have that savior down. It would have been a great turn. Kill that? Yeah, definitely kill that. Maybe we just drop uh, the broadside and bolt the full broadside. Or broadside. I think one stealth drone broadside and. Because that will probably bait a little cork at this point. We need to get those out of the way. And yeah, Stealth Drone next to Anva. I mean, that's that's two cards. That's pretty threatening. We're about to draw that two card. We're about to draw two cards each turn, so our, our hand will refill pretty quickly. Yeah, he really need Will here because he just can't remove. He can't remove the drone with that. Um, Obviously, if he's playing Squid Buggy, yeah, that's what he's gonna do. Got a will. Is there a right, world? I think interesting next turn to respond to this. Is there a world in which you sh you put a shield on the stealth drone? Oh, I think we're going to heal the stealth drone and put armor on it. I think we're going to armor... Oh, yeah, this is good. This is good. Okay. So, I think what we're going to do is we're going to play the best with Sting Wings and heal and armor the board. That will essentially negate the damage that Vespid would take anyways and give it a second armor. Stealth drone will survive this turn and we'll clear his board. Um, armor, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And I so I think first off. what we want to, uh, I think about that, uh, we might want to play dispensation instead. Uh, but first let's uh, let's hit the squig buggy with the uh, with the broadside. That's where we let's do more much. damage as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. And now the stealth drone can hit the bomb squig. Only this zone three or warlord and one to everyone else, which is quite nice. And now, uh, yeah, that's been take out Makari. Hope he doesn't have lethal on us. I think we, I think we want a dispensation for a block or a long strike. I think that's more important. We don't get either, but I think we'll take broadside as a cheap threat. But just drop the drone now and threaten. I, uh, he's in a world of court that. Oh, we got the wrong one. <laughs> it just gave me one side. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. The broadside would have helped us to refill the board. And it will have worked. It's annoying, it's alright. Uh, That's fine. We're, we can still spam with Pathfinder, and Marker Light's going to help close out. Oh, we have Piranha too. That's actually quite good. Um, So we're definitely needing to play Shield on. Um, on this turn. 
Um, three. We can't play Anshi and Piranha. Something we don't play on. Well, you could play Anshi and Pathfinder, actually. I think we. Nine. Yeah, I think we play Anshi and Pathfinder. Uh, one drone close to Anvan, and one drone on the other side of Anshi. We want a shield on our lead, yeah? Yes. Oh, oh, put marker drone on the other side of Anshi. You want Anshi to get the help buff, I think. Yeah, and then shield our... Oh, whoa, did we just play, pay two points for that? We could have just played Savior Protocols, right? No, because we don't have enough for shield then. Oh, okay. We've still got to attack. He's got like proper kill. We can't get an attack. We're stunned. If we had proper kill, or if he has proper kill, that'd be bad. But oh well. So this is doing nothing anyway then. It's saving one point of damage. Now we lost. Lost there. Makari taking it off. And the other answer could have been to fuselage the Makari. allows them to play second by this is is a this is a very this is a very difficult matchup uh, yeah uh, yeah 14 range yeah maybe the since we were stunning maybe the play is to feast a lot the makari and just play like piranha pathfinder in the wide board At least we got an auto player. We did. We do one more. And are we gonna? Are we happy going out with the the fact that we played orcs? <laughs> or do we, do we want to uh, go out on a win? <laughs> we could try for a win. Yeah. Let's try. Getting late. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some more tea. I'll be right back. All right. Oh, we got the Abaddon. Got the Abaddon. Oh, nice. I think we keep yeah missile drone and steam wings. Okay, brilliant. This oh, completes this excellent. This completes the the master class we will have played. And we, I think we'll take the cheaper stratagem. This Let's one try yeah. that. Yeah, because we're gonna buff HP of a unit as well first turn. It's quite good. It's it's never bad to take that when we have a turn one unit to buff. And, and or save your protocol slash dispensation to free to play on turn one. Yeah, because like now even if he plays a. A dark pact on a troop and gives it five HP. We take it out. We're finally getting the, the Abaddon match. Brilliant. Finally, we got them all. Got there. Yeah. I'm actually quite surprised we saw it. We found Ultramarines on the ladder, but good for that. And it's this again, isn't it? Like the been able to drop yeah. this and then just basically get the heal. It's, that is so good. And I think we just pass, right? Yeah, we can pass here. After turn... Well, at, really, once we have like a big body that uh, can trade for free into their stuff, we can start attacking face with our Warlord if we have positive life on them, but until then, it's um, quite a toss-up still. Some crazy dark pact monstrosity can be played that we'll have to be put on the back foot for, but we have another Stingwing in hand and Kion tactics. So I feel like we have a, a lot of damage Ooh. here. Oh, oh, oh that that guy. so lucky. This is fine here. It's already going to die at board. Um, so what can we do here? I think we play the other Stingwings. We attack. Um, I, yeah, I think we attack. That with our warlord and our sting wings, and then save the other sting wings' health. Uh, I think we saved that one. Oh, did I do that the wrong way? Well, I think we could have saved that one's HP or attack that into the into Abaddon and attack the the new one into that. But oh, this I is see, it was one this gives you pretty much the same the same outcome. Now that he doesn't have any flying flankers to really deal with it, anyways.
I think something that actually be said against chaos, while you do want to put a lot of pressure on the board, you often don't want to make your board too wide and fragile because of like it's like traders hate and also the spawndom. Even though a lot of things are flying, having to deal with a lot of spawndom things can still be annoying and they can take out your few big suits on the board. We can um, tactics there. And then drop the bot broadside. I guess it's free, yes, yeah, so we can do both. And that would make a that little Almost dead stingwing trade quite nicely. Thank you. Got this. Yeah. And then to your point, the board hasn't got too wide as well. We are so far definitely the ones benefiting from the cheaper. Definitely, yeah. I mean, one of his best response is the. Uh... Oh, actually, that. That Drakian's quite quite good against broadside. Very good, eh? This is wide run. Okay. So. So we definitely do not play the second broadside right now. No. Um, it's gotta be I that. I think we save your protocols. Yeah. Um, hero power. Um. Could do armor because it would could be free. Or Storm of Fire, because we might need more reach next... I think Storm of Fire. We might need some reach next turn against whatever he plays, because we're not going to have a lot of damage on board all of a sudden. And then I think we hit him ranged with both of our guys, because this is actually where you start attacking his HP with our Warlord, because every time he hits us, it's six. We hit him. It's an even trade. We're on the clock for sure, unless we always have a large board. I'm thinking maybe we could go for a quick kill and broadside one drone and greater good next turn. Yeah, I think that's definitely what we have to do. Oh, I think I lost you in there. No. Okay, we're back. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I'm what, here. What are you thinking here? Um, yeah, that's, uh, hmm, we could clear that with Storm of Fire, actually. Um, no, well, maybe we do that. I think that's why I think that was good we got Storm of Fire. I think we don't get too greedy quite yet. I think we can Storm of Fire, trade into Urkus. That's not too bad. Play that Sniper Drone in our hero power. Sniper drone here, if I yeah. Yeah, and then maybe get another storm of fire to repeat the process for next turn. Oh, right, that's right. And now next turn we can get two um, two drones off of. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, we just baited that out for our broadside to be pretty pretty comfy. Now we do broadside and, and great a good, right? Yeah. I'm going to put both drums on one side. A little something else to play by the time they remove broadside. Now the question is, what's lethal up next turn? We have two storms, so that's going to be 16... Plus, yeah, we're well within lethal range unless he can remove these drones. Yeah, it's double storm of fire, right? Yeah, and it only costs us six energy to do that now. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, the, 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 the free uh, cost reduction works when it works. Well, he has to have a second uh, whatever he just played, doesn't he? I don't think what else he can possibly do. Oh, wait a minute. Right as hate, yeah. Ah. Nice. What was it? Oh, is he digging for it? No, he, he can't play it anymore. <laughs> that was well, energy. Well. 
Oh, he's gonna just fight. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think, I think this is still. Let's see. The missile drone will trade into that and do two damage to him. So he's at 19, and we'll have uh, six, 12 from Storm of Fire, and then yeah, he's dead. Double Storm of Fire. Oh, because the blast, just the blast from the missile. It helps out, but I think we still got him. We still have 12 damage, on, or 20, 22 damage, rather, of just our, our troops left. Wow. That's what I call going out in style, Barrett. Yeah, <laughs> I'd say so. That's what I call a town master class. <laughs> well, I'd say that... Uh, this video is definitely a little bit longer than planned, but it's cool. I think for those who really, if you, if you if you're with us, you know, you really want to see um, kind of like the ins and outs of the deck. You know, we won some, we lost some, but I, th I think every game we played there, we kind of like there was something to learn from the deck and from how it played sure. out. So uh, yeah, if you like this one, guys, please like and subscribe. And um, massive thanks to to you, Barrett. Uh, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed that session, actually. I feel I could do hours. I mean, I have actually got to go to bed because I've got to be up. Yeah, it's kind of late for you, I bet. But, but um, no, that was cool. I learned a ton there. Um, and um, I hope everybody, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to have uh, picked up a lot of really good stuff from you there. So thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad to have been had back here. I hope some, I definitely do hope the uh, you got to learn something there and it was fun playing those games and talking through my deck. Absolutely, and uh, also we're going to have Barrick on the for next episode of Forgecast, I believe. Um, so we're going to have, I think it's episode 10, and I think we might even have a little round table. There might be four of us on there, um, and we'll be able to talk about the new Abaddon release, and we'll be able to talk about, uh, not Abaddon, sorry, the new Black Legion re release, mm -hmm. and um, some other stuff. So yeah, so expect to hear more from Barrick. Uh, until then, thank you very much. Uh, for for that barrack and uh, yeah guys we'll see you in the next